the button was pressed, and I'm sure. Are we live? Yeah, we live now. Oh my god, I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> all three point two of our fans can hear us. Yeah, all all one person who will probably show up to this thing, <clears throat> since it's magic related, and who gives a shit about magic? Yeah, fuck. Am I set. right? Who's, this set's who's terrible. This terrible this, game. This set, actually, did you see that uh, someone put on the subreddit? That uh, magic is starting to eat away at Hearthstone's viewership on Twitch. I saw. We're getting close to just overtaking completely. That'd be pretty great. <clears throat> I know. Anyway. Right? Hearthstone's ass. Anyway, let's talk about magic. Yeah. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Tim and Friedman. We're here uh, to talk about War of the Spark. Oh, hey, Zach. So we do have at least one person. Uh, <laughs> we're here to talk about War of the Spark, the set that just finished spoiling yesterday. And we're going to go through and kind of do a set review slash upgrade my commander decks. Because a bunch of these cards are really, really, really good. A lot of them are really good. I just don't need all of them, but we're going to talk about most of them and, and have a fun afternoon. Hello, Chocolate Memes. Jeez, that's a good name. Alrighty. Beautiful. So we're on Mythic Spoilers, and I have my deck stats with my commander deck lists open on my other, uh, other half of the screen. So unfortunately, I'm pretty sure some of my commander decks get nothing. That's that's totally fine, Zach. Uh, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure uh, the the most upgraded commander deck from this is actually Kess, which really sucks because you know how tight the Kess list is. <laughs> uh, also, deck stat says my Kess deck is worth four thousand three hundred dollars. That's with foils selected I, for all of them. Yeah, so deck stats made it so you can pick sets and foils for everything. So now it actually has the costs of pretty much everything I have in here. It's pretty great. Oh, also, uh, you know that Omniscience Invocation I bought? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't used it in a while, and I wanted to get some... Uh, I wanted to... I'm trying to sell so much stuff. Um, one of the guys in my group was like, oh, do you want to sell or sell and trade? And I'm like, well, you probably don't have anything I need for trade. And he's like, I have one foil unstable mountain. <laughs> and Kess runs one mountain. <laughs> And it wasn't foil yet, so I'm like, perfect. Give me 45 Beautiful. bucks in that. I can't believe those lands are so expensive. Oh, yeah, dude. Um, Memes, do we like the new Rainbow Six operatives? We actually haven't played Siege in a while because we've all been busy and Game of Thrones has been eating into our Sunday nights. I'm also super poor and haven't played any of the non-default yeah. operators, so I can't For comment there. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't even spent money on them either. Or no, I spent money a while ago, but I still have a bunch of currency. Anyway, uh, let's start looking at the set. So top row, we got the Gate Watch with their new invoca new incar jeez in new incarnations. Um, let's see, Gideon is probably the strongest he's ever been. I'm gonna zoom in more so that everybody can I, see. I love this Gideon. I don't know if he. Has a home in any of my commander decks, though? No, he doesn't for me either, but he's probably up there for best Gideon ever printed. Definitely. He's super strong. I mean, you cast him, and he's immediately a 4-4 four, four creature on your turn that you can put uh, just one good keyword. They're all good keywords. Put yeah. one good keyword on any other creature, and then or and then it sucks that you have to tick him up to exile, but I mean, pop uh, proliferate is yeah, just so busted. Set. Um, now, we're actually kind of split on this Jace. You like this Jace a lot more than I do. <laughs> so I, I really like this Jace, especially for four mana. So just for context, when I first started playing Standard, it was uh, Return to Ravnica, and the four mana Jace there had really shitty card advantage. <laughs> so the question is whether you can capitalize on his win con. If you're going for that, that's great. Otherwise, his plus one is probably one of the best, like, draw a card effects on a four mana Planeswalker. Because you can, if you're going for mill, you can mill your opponent. Or like, if you're like half the strategies in modern or in soul tie when you're playing commander, putting shit in your graveyard is also really good. I mean, here's my issue with it: if you like, Labman is a better way to win the game with that line of text. And if you're not doing that, yeah. then he's pretty much just a repeatable thought scour. And I'm saying that's not a bad thing. Okay. I guess it. I guess because the only place I think Scott's that yeah, thought scour sees much play is in modern, and modern would never play this Jace. So no, at four mana you want to be doing a lot more, especially considering you're competing with Jace the Mindful. <laughs> yeah. So it's not going to replace him in anyone's build. Oh yeah, Freeman, are you going to try to buy the Mythic Edition? I was debating on it, and then I realized I I probably shouldn't. I am gonna. So I'm not gonna go out of my way to buy the cards, 
but I am going to try to buy the Mythic Edition. Because okay. I think getting one copy of that Mythic Edition basically pays for itself. Freeman, I'm hearing I'm a little bit of that I'm reverb echo. i copy of the, the Nahiri, because I think she's going to be worth absolutely nothing after this gets printed. That's very true. You are so correct, sir. I might sir. try and grab that. Um, and I actually run the Nahiri in my Samut deck, so I could actually even use the new one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, like... I because I we'll get to it eventually, but like Nickel Bolas, I've been thinking about putting in Kess. We'll actually talk about it when we get to him. Um, and Jace the Mind Sculptor, obviously, I run in Kess. So I figure those two, and then Ugin, I could easily sell or it would just replace the one that I'm selling today because <laughs> I'm selling yeah. my promo. Freeman, we're hearing the reverb. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. I had to make sure my microphone isn't like in my earphone. That's okay. I already don't hear anymore. Uh, anyway, continuing with the set, Liliana Dreadhorde General, me and my buddy in my commander playgroup who actually also plays zombies, we are split on this card. Uh, he likes it, I don't. Um, I don't think it's bad. So like, here's, you gotta evaluate in two scenarios, you're ahead or you're behind. Mm -hmm. When you're behead, uh, behead, when you're ahead, when you're beheaded. <laughs> it's, when you're ahead, I think it's still pretty good. Like, when she comes down, you minus four, and you have a bunch of stupid zombies. That's great. You're going to draw two cards off of it, and everyone else is going to start sacking their board. If you don't have anything, you're just making a 2-2 two -two zone with her. She kind of sucks for a 6-drop. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the I ultimate kind of is also pretty strong, too. So, I actually don't like her only because I already have a few Lilianas in... Uh, like, if I actually go to the tab for my zombie deck, I currently run three Lilianas, the five drop Death's Majesty from Amonkhet, which has reanimate and make a zombie token and self mill, or Last Hope, which is a three drop, which is much better, or the Flip Walker. Those are the three Planeswalkers I run in that deck, and I don't think it replaces a single one of those. Do you have any big fat zombies you think that she's a better replacement for there? I mean, six, I'm gonna not gonna lie. Six mana is always a tough spot for a planeswalker. You really got to. Yeah. Consider, like, the the other problem. I actually, want at that point in the game. The other problem is it's a six mana planeswalker taking the place of a zombie that I can reanimate a lot more easily than her. Yeah. Like I'm looking at the list. Scarab God, I love. Like Shieldred is so much better. Like the the only uh, things that are five or more. Vengeful Pharaoh. That's one of my favorite combat tricks. I I. That card's too fun to cut. Scarab God is too good. Uh, Sadisi's obviously too good. Shieldred, Scourge of Neltoth is one of the only zombie fly zombie flyers in the world. Yeah. Uh, Newscraft Mob, way better. Micaeus, obviously. Uh, Kakusho, obviously. Haven Ghoul Lich, Grimgrin. Grave Titan, Ghoul Caller Gisa, Geth. Uh, the... Mm, now I'm... I just I don't want to undersell the value of multiple planeswalkers. Is there if there's anything that I've learned from playing standard this year, especially against these four color planeswalker control you know, decks, is that the second you have more than one of them out, like a planeswalker can be must deal with, and your table may try to deal with it. But the second you have two to three, it really gets out of hand because people are like, uh, all of these are kind of backbreaking. What do I do? So here's the thing that I just kind of got to. Gisa Gisa is actually very not as good as I'd like. Ghoul Color Gisa is like such a good creature that she gets removed almost every single time before she gets to activate. And if you're gonna play a five mana creature that does nothing, why not play a six mana planeswalker? That does something with that, kind of comes in. Yeah. Hmm. Plus Liliana's like I'd argue she's harder to remove. Yeah, people can attack her, but people generally run less, you know, like, destroy target creep. I'm gonna, sorry, sorry, destroy target planeswalker effect. So I've been doing this thing on deck stats where I've been adding comments to cards with what I'm going to replace them with. I'm going to I'm gonna add a comment to uh, Ghoul Caller Gisa, maybe, or uh, not override, replace with Dread Horde, Liliana Dread Horde. Yeah, I, I you know what? That's a really fair point going through the list. That's like the one card that I think when she's good, she's great, but it's so 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 hard to get value from her. And she's not yeah. a zombie, and it's like at that point what's the difference between a non-zombie creature that I'm probably not going to reanimate versus a planeswalker that I also can't reanimate? <laughs> 
The only thing that makes me nervous is I always get nervous about forced card draw. Like, cards that say draw a card instead of you may draw a card that aren't a spell that you cast once freak me the fuck out. <laughs> you're, I, it, you're, there is an inherent risk to that. You are right. But... I think it's okay because also if you get a if someone board wipes with her on the field, then you get to redraw a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. You convince. The me. only issue comes back if you have the problem of, like, um. <gasps> That's what it is. Because I win the game so often with the grave crawler combo that I could actually deck myself. Oh, that's why I was so yeah, worried any kind about of it. Repeatable like sack this creature, it comes back. Oh uh, Sometimes no. you're out of hand. Um. Well, then all you have to do is hold off until you can ult her. Or just let her die and then go yeah. for it. Or have, uh, make, what's it called? The new, remember the Ravnica new flesh bag that's a human, but it's really good? Yeah, the one that lets you sack a planeswalker. Yeah, I would need that somewhere. Okay, I think it's still worth it, though. Um, new Chandra, I don't like her that much. So, my... So I think she's decent for the four mana slot. The problem is, and this is my problem whenever I evaluate red cards for commander, is generally the only like truly red deck I play is uh, Feldman of the Third Path. Just, you can't run it. Yeah, so when it comes to like red cards, like exiling the top card to play it, I don't give a shit because I don't really want to play these big red creatures that I'm trying to like reanimate. I mm -hmm. just want Planeswalkers with discard or looting effects. So anything you see Chandra with the... Exile the top card, you may cast it. I'm just like, all right, forget it. I'm not running that. The other problem is her static ability is really not very good. Compared to a lot of the other static abilities, it's pretty freaking weak that it's only when she gets attacked or ultimates that you get to zap things. Yeah. That's really weak. Like, compared only... to, like, the Nissa who's next to her, I mean, it's nothing. <laughs> the thing with her is that she's so... What's the term I'm looking for? innocuous that people generally don't want to attack her the only deck i'd consider putting in her is a, a deck i always keep my eyes on scred in modern just because mm -hmm. they run the four mana um Ch chandra just for that effect so having two of them in play can what be the torch sweet. yeah torch defines yeah but torch is just so much better in that's that deck. A, no no torch is so much better but the, the advantage to this is you still get that exile effect but you can have two of them in play and that's the only thing i think might be the reason you would consider ah, feel like... running like one of this or potentially pull out one torch for this i know torch is definitely much i feel like overall. it's such a such an edge case to worry it's, about yeah, two it's super duper edge case. and she does nothing except tick up like in modern yeah. you only tick her up once or twice then it's like well maybe you should just play like like outpost siege or something like that so i i noticed this it, it took me way too long to realize but every single planeswalker in set has a static effect in the yep. set originally i thought it was only going to be the rare and lower but then i realized all the mythics have them too yep they're very good. I, I'm like, I'm wondering if this is what they're going to do going forward. If this was no. just to make planeswalkers work for the set, this was definitely just to add room. It's something they'll pull out when they need to. Now that they've un unlocked the tech, but I don't think this is a permanent change at all. Yeah. Uh, Nissa, who shakes the world. The only reason, the only deck I might put it in is uh, Salvala, which so, is such a tight list, but it's a double mana for my basic forest, which isn't bad. So I'm absolutely afraid to run her. Just because I I am the king of board wipes in EDH. Kill your own lands. So making Always my own happens. lands destroyable really like bothers me. Yeah. That said, I was brewing this um what is it the green Frailies the the green uh, commander flames walker. I was brewing a deck with her for a while, but I was like this is just a dumb big mana green deck. But she's perfect for dumb big mana green decks. Even if you don't make your lands into elementals, the doubling effect is pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. If you can get that minus eight off, though, that's, that's real really nice. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Vivian, Champion of the Wild, still not as good as the new, the first Vivian. But cool. It's a, it's neat that they put creatures having flash on a new creature instead of Yeva being the ancient creature that has that. And I do like the card advantage on Vivian, specifically just for creature decks. Because, I mean, you'll get her down early, and usually you don't want to... Uh, it's kind of conflicting with green decks you do still want to be ripping lands off the top yeah but this lets you kind of like put a creature to a side that you can cast anytime she's out so it's kind of like pseudo card advantage in green yeah it it is also protected from like hand discarding and stuff like that it's it's yeah. in its own safe zone which is kind of, it's kind of cool that it, the idea is i guess she's like storing it in her bow for you to cast it whenever yeah, and if she stays on the field you can cast it whenever you want which is neat especially being at three i think she's pretty sweet yeah three mana is the one saving grace of her card i don't know 
I would consider I'm so my Izuri, um the one one counter Izuri with experience counters. Yeah. His list is kind of tight right now, but I would possibly consider Vivian for that because that deck, even though it's a blue deck, it doesn't have too much card drawn and it always kind of fizzles out in the late game. So I might consider her because usually any creature you, you can rip off with her, you're going to be able to cast by the time you're on turn three or four. Mm -hmm. Especially because you can get her before. So turn four is the critical turn for Izuri. You play her turn three, exile something, Izuri turn four, and then you have access to whatever creature she found on turn five. Mm -hmm. So she kind of plays well with his strategy. So I might be grabbing one of her. Yeah, I mean, my only green decks are Samut and Silvala, and she doesn't really fit in Silvala. I say that no that you know what the other problem with Silvala is the three drops for a lot is when you get Silvala the the thing with Silvala is you just need it to be a creature in it's such a tight list that like I only run one planeswalker and it's the five drop Nissa that from Kaladesh because I can make yeah. a creature a land of five five and untap it so that I could tap out for Nissa make a cre make a land of five five and then tap with Silvala to make five mana yep which is really good. Vivian, yeah, that's really good synergy. Vivian is good, but doesn't really help except for just digging for creatures. That's all she really gives the deck. And it's like, well, why not just run a creature? Because almost every creature is mana for Salvala anyway. Um, I don't know. She's she's something I'll keep in the back of my mind. But and and Samut, she doesn't really help either because Samut's decks are Samut already has so many keywords and everything on it. Yeah. Um and. While three drops aren't bad, well, I don't know. I'll add her to the... Okay, you know what? I actually have a... So I actually have another thing. Um, I actually have a, a thing that is... Uh, <laughs> sweet as heck cards unused in EDH. <laughs> and it's just a list of cards a that list I'm... Of cool cards you might consider for something. Exactly. It's a, it's a list of really cool cards that it's like, hey, someday I might want to put this in a deck somewhere, but... Oh, I have a list of that on my phone. Every time someone mentions some weird-ass card in an, like a thread on EDH, somewhere, I write it down like, this is cool. Don't know where to play it, but this is cool. And it's always wow. crazy jank. Deck stats doesn't have Vivian Champion of the Wilds. Deck stats, no. Let me see something. Do they have filter by... Do they not have a filter by set? Yeah, there it is. So I love it. I was putting together yeah, a feather of the list spark. just because I was bored at work. And they, they, like, don't... They, like, forget to turn off all the reminders about cards that aren't out yet. And it gave me, like, 15 warnings. Like, this is illegal in Commander. And I'm like, I know. Feather's not out yet. Calm down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, deck stats only has 18 War of the Spark cards. Great. All right, well, I can't add Vivian to that list. I'll, I'll do direct card entry. Vivian. Champ, uh, champion. Wow, other people have it in direct card entry because they don't have it as an existing card in deck stats. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, next, Sarkon the Masterless. Uh, he seems actually really fucking good <laughs> in a dragon deck. Um, so I was reading some of the discussion. Cards. A lot of people think he's a trap. Just because um, he's only good when you have a lot of dragons out. That said, when he comes in, since usually the, like, I'm talking in the aspect of, like, the Ur dragon lists, mm -hmm. he he can be a dragon, but he doesn't get the discount cost. Oh, yeah, he's no. He's not apparently a dragon. He comes down as a non haste 4 4. The deck typically doesn't run too many other planeswalkers, so that effect is just, like, him only. Um, the someone attacks you effect is really good because it de incentivizes people getting aggressive with you. Which, which the dragon deck has a tendency to do. Um, so it's iffy. The question is, is he worth it at the five mana slot? I don't think I don't think it's bad. I think if you play him on an empty board, honestly, minus him for a 4-4 four, four dragon is not terrible. Five, five mana for a 4-4 four, four is like the uncommon dragon cost rate in mm -hmm. MTG. So it's not the worst. And you do get some versatility out of it. The question is if you can make room for it. That's very I, fair. You, I think, uh, I'm being a piece of shit no, not modify my dragon list from the stock one because I'm yeah. terrible. So I, no, I don't well, know where, where I think I think Ur Dragon is a list you don't run him in. I think he goes in a lot of the like mono red kind of more budgety dragon lists because I mean the strongest dragon lists are usually the five color Ur Dragon or Scion decks. He definitely goes into um But like a budget mono red like, like, like Lathless. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. like a perfect fit there. The more budget ones that would run things like a bunch of planeswalkers to kind of support everything. I just feel like that's the situation where you'd run him a yeah, lot definitely. more. 
Daver okay, now we're getting into the uncommon walkers. We don't have to talk about all of them. Um, Most of these are pretty bad. Yeah, or or they're just not amazing in Commander. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a there's a couple decks that I don't particularly play that I know a couple of these are good, and I know Davriel. The only the only deck I'd put him in is we built that Nico Bolas discard yep. theme deck the other week. Yep. He's great in that because dude, that was mo like weeks or months ago. <laughs> yeah, it was maybe half a year ago. I'm losing track of that. <laughs> but point is, he makes your discard have more of a win condition, and you know, generally that deck has enough discard. But if you're you know sitting on a low hand or someone just drew a bunch of cards that's when you pop his minus one but generally you just have him sit there sit out there like an enchantment i think they so it sucks that his minus one is target player discards a card i think though their problem was we can't fucking put a minus one each player discard a card or each opponent because in commander that's way too good for yeah, like a three th drop if for three mana that's too good if they made him five or six i'd say that's it's justified to do that yeah but then he'd have to have much better tech. So, yeah, they kind of yeah. went where they had to. Um, um, Kazmina's cool if you're playing any kind of wizard tribal. I think, her, like, like ignoring her static, that just make a wizard and then loot is pretty sweet for those decks. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I feel like none of these are really things you can run. Like, oh, look, Teo, you have hexproof. Like the, oh, you Teo just, is kind of ass. Teo's, He's only good as something to just make some walled weenies in the He's only wall good deck. In the, uh, what's it called? The Arcades deck, but that card, that it. deck also is probably too tight for him. I don't. Except maybe. for like a budget one, I feel like there's because they've also been in the mode of printing lots of cards. Like we're gonna hit more cards that are toughness related in the set, and it feels like Arcades is rapidly filling up. Like him and Doran are getting too many toys almost. <laughs> that I want to like build Arcades just because. I've seen the standard deck, and the problem is I don't want to build it because it's rotating like mm -hmm. in less than six months, and yeah, it involves a lot of mythics. But it's a cool deck, and I'm considering looking at it for commander. The problem is almost everything related to that deck spiked when he got revealed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a cool deck. Yeah, because it's such a un it's such a different thing. Um, Wanderer, I actually really like in commander. Well, yeah, Wanderer is nice. I wish we got some lore about her, but I the mean, static yeah. effect is always great for. Um, a lot of the Boros builds, because I know if you play yeah. the the Blastus. Red White God, isn't his like prevent all combat damage? Yeah. So between Heroes. the two of them, you're effectively zero damage. So yeah. it's, it's nice synergy with some of the standard Boros no combat damage effect. It it also goes like in the Fire Song and Sunspeaker deck where you blow up the board a lot to gain shit tons of life, or you run it in yeah. the Tajik deck as redundancy, or Plus all the, these other the things. The exile effect is still really good. Like yep, exactly, people, people play it. Big Elspeth because that effect is good. Exactly, it's one of the static abilities that's actually really good. Um, Narset, patron of part of Veils. I mean, it's my girl Narset looking real good and still drawn by Magali, but she's not a very good card. She's. I think she's too narrow for Commander. I don't. I don't know what would even play her. Like, she's I, a very I, meta call actually in Commander. If like, you have a lot of big draw decks, then you're like, yeah, we need to. Yeah, the only time I've ever played that, like, each opponent can't draw more than one card effect, it was that brief moment I was playing Legacy, and there's that one mm -hmm. enchantment creature Eidolon or something that yep. stops your opponent from doing it. It was just because you could violin in response, like a brainstorm or something. Yep. But I doing it at sorcery speed doesn't always but feel she, that great. But she costs three, so some people are going to try it for sure. That's the other it's cool not, thing. A lot of these uncommons are nice and cheap, so they're actually reasonable. Yeah, it's not terrible. Plus, you do get the, um, what's it called? I always want to call it the search for Ascanta. Yeah, no, I, that's name a, for this. Uh, it's not impulse because impulse digs that deep, but impulse finds anything. Yeah, it's like it's a shitty impulse, but it's still good. Card I mean, selection. in the right deck, it's great. But yeah, uh, I, I don't, she, I'm not personally running this in any. She's definitely not good enough for Kess. Let's put it that way, and that's yeah. my spell slinger deck. So, uh, Obnixilis, he goes in Saison, which is what my buddy has. He has a Saison deck, so he's gonna pick if up I was Obnixilis. Running... Nekusar, he would yep. slide. Yep, Nekusar and Saison, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jaya's pretty cool. Jaya's not... So but at first time five. I looked at her, I'm like, oh, she's crap. But um, if you play like a deck involving a lot of pingers, which isn't a very Neheb. common thing to do... Actually, funny crazy. enough, my playgroup has one Neheb deck, old Neheb, and one... Uh, uh, what's it called? Um... Rakdos, the the second Rakdos, Lord of Riots. So both of those decks run a bunch of pingers and, and like board damage and stuff to make things cheaper. So Jai is actually maybe a consideration for those. Yeah, she'd probably fit into those decks. Um, It kind of sucks that she doesn't Lightning Bolt, considering you'd want her to. Oh, the like, first time I read it, I thought she did. Everyone's like, yo, read this card. And I, I learned that I can't read magic cards correctly. 
Um, Arlen is terrible, except in the werewolf deck that never works. Which is already pretty terrible. <laughs> like, why does she cost six mana? Why did you make her have seven loyalty? Why? Like, you, this, could, uh... you could have just dropped a loyalty only given... Well, she gets three activations here, which isn't terrible. Yeah, but, but like, so what? I feel like the second you're down to two, she's just a terrible card. Uh, yeah. Like, if she was a four drop, she'd be great. Four and five. But then it's like, <laughs> oh, then you make two, six power for four mana. That's still good. Yeah, I don't know. Arlen's just... I'm so disappointed, because I actually run the old Arlen, the flip Arlen and Samut for fun, and That's it's just like... She's, I, I like old Arlen. Yeah, our old Arlen's really... She fun. has a lot more text on her than this one fucking does. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now we get to the serious shit. Two cycles we're going to talk about. The, the new gods and the finale cycle. <sighs> God Eternal Ronus. So we were talking briefly the other... I think it was on the podcast where we thought about their way of handling the air quotes indestructible god effect. Yeah, the new god um, effect. And I was telling Tim that I like this more than the last time we saw them. Now, I know there's always... They needed a flavorful way to have the idea that the gods don't function until they have, like, Some like a certain critical condition. So, like, with Theros, it was really flavorful that devotion was supposed to be, like, how much do, like, people believe in these gods? Because the more people believe, the more real they are. And I thought that was really cool flavor-wise. And then they're like, okay, well, we need to do this again on Amonkhet. And they're like, Okay, well, it can't attack or defend unless some arbitrary conditions met, and I hated it because it made the deck restrictions very particular. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, Devotion just awarded you for playing Magic. Mm -hmm. So with these ones, they're like, fuck it. They can attack and defend their gods, whatever, their zombie gods. But they wanted to keep the indestructibleness without making them busted. So now they just have the recurability of the showing up three... It was like 30 Three turns later. Life. Yeah, three turns later. Um, which can be great for Commander. I know... I can speak from experience about how many times my commanders got removed. It gets up to like <laughs> nine mana to recast. It's like, all right, cool. Let's see how this deck functions out as commander now. Um, and if you get to that point with these, at that point, you'd never, never let it go to the command zone. Just play it three turns later. So, so they're, they're not bad as commanders. No, I'll say that 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 ability is not terrible. That's but I will it. say they are designed clearly to not be your commander. Yeah, these are not great leaders none right? of these i would run as a commander all of them i'm considering for a deck except oketra and that's only because i don't have my zombie deck does not have is not a um varina deck it's still grix it's still demir it's not uh esper so so i didn't think about it, but oketra might go into um what's her name sisai just because with that deck, you're always casting a creature every turn once you get past yeah, 10. That's why I thought about it for some move, so, but I don't want so it. <laughs> you're getting that extra 4-4 four, four every turn, which is good. It's free, but I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Every single one of these decks has a pot. Like, Ronus. Ronus, to me, feels like it could look at Samut or Selvala. I actually wonder if it could find a place in Selvala. So um, with Ronus, I see him. If you try and play him as a commander, he's not the kind of commander you play. You know, he's not your. What am I trying to say? He is your win combo. The idea is you want your deck to function without him. You're trying to hit critical yeah. mass of creatures, and you essentially just want a. Um, Honestly, the only thing you care about with Ronus is his first line of text. There is not his one, everything after death touch. That one behemoth card, Luigi always wins it with in every format. Crater hoof. This is essentially a there bad crater hoof, but it's in your command zone to just make everything big. The turn he comes down, so you try yeah. and just like kill someone. But well, more importantly, oh, excuse me. They also don't get uh, trample, which they don't. Crater, that's the big problem. Crater hoof does. Yeah, that's why he's so good. Because the thing about God Eternal Ronus is in Selvala, doubling power is really fucking good because it means I have more mana to do stuff. Also, in Samut, I win with combat damage, so punching for a lot of mana is still really good. <laughs> yeah. I think for now, I'm just going to throw Ronas into... Uh, I think I think Ronas can only go into the Sweet as Heck cards to buy later. I don't, I don't think I have it in me to find a place for him now, but I need to remember that he exists. Because... He's just so good. And speaking of so good, Ilharg, the Raised Boar, um, this <laughs> has to find a space in Samut. I have yeah, to. Yeah, I was going to say with him, I, d I don't think I'd ever play him as a commander because no. I don't know how he works with Mono Red, but like he feels like he belongs in like every Red Splash deck that's creature-based. Like, oh my god, just... which is what Samut all day is. Yeah. 
And especially with haste, because Samut gives all my... St- like, usually the way yeah, I... am saying if he had haste, he'd be real freaking good, but because he doesn't... It's the way iffy. Samut works is I never cast a spell... I almost never cast a 5-drop until I've cast Samut the first time at the end of my last opponent's turn. And then immediately turn 6 goals around and I can swing with Ilharg. Like, how fucking good. Uh, it gets real good. The but is what do I cut for this? <laughs> The, the problem is with him is you want like more big creatures to like bring out. With well, him. that's what Samut has. <laughs> Wait, what's what's your like? What's your curve look like on Samut? Uh, let's see. Let's analyze the deck. The problem is I also have like four other changes I'm lining up in Samut already. So like, oh man, dude, I have such a funny story about that. Hold on, let me find this first. Uh, so my curve is mostly three, four, five. Uh, and even into six. I have ten six drops in that deck. This is a very uh, high you'll, curve. On on average, I'll have something. I'll have something. Yeah, oh, it's just so good. Oh my god. Um, right, real plus quick, returning to two. what? So real, let's just do the oh, other yeah. two gods and move on. Yeah. You mean so, the other three? Oh, or, or do we, no, already we already counting it? About, yeah. Oh, Ketra enough? Okay. Yeah, whatever. Oh, Ketra is whatever. I don't think she stand alone, stands well on her on many creatures. Like any deck that can play at least one creature a turn is great, but I don't think she's strong enough for mono white. No, not at all. But she does go in the zombie deck because the Esper zombie deck probably because hey you're making yeah. zombies. Oh yeah, that's the zombie type is super <sighs> important there. I don't want to talk about Kefnet. I mean Kefnet's just fucking busted. You know why I don't want to talk about Kefnet because what do I cut from Kess to put in Kefnet? What do I find do? It, Where do I a find it? That you think might be shittier and swap it out because that's what Kefnet is. She's <sighs> Kefnet's and so the, like, good. <laughs> if you can't find the Nabler worth cutting when she's not gonna make him in the list but like you can't cut like one of your big spells with this because all kevin does is just enable more spells ah! <laughs> like I, this is these, such these... a tight list what do i do this is this is your big your big challenge here is this is so tough i want to put Ke- kevin okay so here's what my creatures are right now baral dire fleet daredevil Dawson to perfection goblin electromancer gutter snipe nightscape familiar torrential gear hulk What do I even do? I can't cut a non-creature. I I don't want to make this argument because as I was about to say, I'm like it sounds stupid. I was gonna say maybe Gear Hulk for. Oh, don't say that because I was already get, thinking because, that. Because you get more spells off of Kefnet <laughs> if she sticks on one turn. Like that's what I was thinking already. Like, the thing is, I like the Gear Hulk. He's really the Gear good. Hulk's, the Gear Hulk is such a good. It's a better Snapcaster. It's also a great body. So yeah, like, that's the thing. It's such a body, but Kefnet also is a good body, and it comes down yeah, two right, turns right, earlier. It's also flying too. Yeah, I want to consider it. And also, I have the invention, and it's so pretty. There you go. That's what makes it even harder. Damn it! I guess swap for Kefnet. Ah, I don't want to so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll buy a foil Kefnet when the set's released. My god. And then the last one of the gods, because Tim already knows that Kefnet's great. At this point, we're just looking for cuts. Kefnet's With Baku, I think his home, like, I, again, he's not a commander, but he belongs in any zombie deck that specializes in just, like, tons of zombie tokens. Well, or Dude, sacrifice. You want to, like, wait till you've played out your stuff. Or, yeah. <sighs> like my Taza sacrifice though. deck that I just built. <laughs> That's right. Oh, he, he's pretty good. Ah! Well, that's like, like you, you should be running enough sack outlets. I like, am, uh, but like... Out. You're not sitting there going, oh, fuck, I haven't sacrificed anything yet. It's more like, oh, shit, I should get more stuff down to sacrifice first. But like, Friedman, if you cast Bantu and then have instant speed sacrifice, you could do him as a giant sack spell, sacrifice himself to the tri- to the thing like if you have an altar out you cast bantu sack five things to draw five and then tuck him back in with a with an instant speed sack outlet and redraw him and it's like having a sack draw spell all the time seems good hold on can you i'm just curious of the wording of that effect can you respond can you respond like you at first, you have to sacrifice any other number of permanents. Yeah. Then draw the cards. Can you sack like five permanents and then sack him and then his effect? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. During, or does it go on the stack after this effect? There's a trigger on the stack. 
Because the sacrifice is not a cost. The sacrifice nope. is part of the ability going off. Well, it doesn't matter. You still target... Even if you pick them... Like, you, he enters the battlefield. I'm pretty sure on targeting. resolution. Yeah, it's not, it's not targeting, no. But I'm saying, like... Oh, I have, like, four tokens. Let's sack these four tokens. In response, I sack Bantu to my Ashnod's altar to get two colorless mana. Bantu's ability triggers... And he goes third from the top, and then his ability resolves, and I draw five cards. And then I read Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not sure if you have the ability to respond to the sacrifice. I think the sacrifice and draw are both Why? It's a, low resolution with the effect. No, it's a trigger. Yeah, I'm not saying you no, have to ETB respond to the sacrifice. The trigger, not the sacrifice. Like, there's no colon after the sacrifice. So what? Why? It's that still a be, trigger that would on be the, the stack. Cost. No, that's the resolution. What? When he enters the battlefield is your trigger. His yeah. ability goes on the stack at that point. Then, as it's resolving, you sack the permanence and draw the cards. But since that's the effect resolving, I don't think you can respond by sacrificing him to the altar. You can't like, sacrifice him to his own ability anyway. No, I know you can't. But I'm saying you can't sacrifice him to the altar while this is in the middle of resolving. Why? It's like any other trigger on the stack. But it's not a, tr it's not a trigger. This is the resolution. It, like, but it doesn't... Unless... But it's still a when it enters the battlefield. Tr or are you saying it's a it's not an when? It, no, but it's worded like any enter the battlefield trigger. Yeah, when he enters the battlefield, the ability goes on the stack. Yeah. Oh, you you're for? responding at that point. I thought yeah. You were responding, oh, I forget. I thought you were responding. No, I'm not a, a responding in the second. middle. Forget. I thought you were trying to imply you were. No, you were God, doing no. Like, that's, that doesn't I know work that, that shit way. doesn't right, work. Yeah, you can't right, insert fine, it. Then. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying though. Like you play him as a fight. You basically play him as a. Let's say sack four tokens or something. Draw four, draw four cards and return the draw three cards and return this to your hand. Okay, I got caught. I got way too caught up in your wording. So you're like, I'm gonna sack five permanents, then sack him to the altar. I'm like, back up. No, you no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If you, yeah, if you sack him first, this works. <laughs> Cipher's asking for your dark, ma dank magic deck builds. Uh, God, Cipher, just we're just doing only... the set review and mostly working on my stuff. Only only play decks where if your commander dies, your whole deck is pointless to play. Oh my That's my award-winning strategy for a commander. <laughs> Works every time. Meanwhile, my best deck, my Kess deck, doesn't even like play the commander. <laughs> she, like, never <laughs> shows up. Bricks is good spells. Oh, my God. Uh, Yeah. God Eternal Bantu is going on... Oh, my God. It's going on the find a spot eventually. Uh, my sweet as heck cards thing. Yeah, like I gotta eventually I, build a zombie deck and Bonds who's definitely. I'll even put whatever God I do. Eternal Oketra. Like Oketra I don't know. I think she's good enough. I the more I think about like in Samut, three six double strike is amazing, and then making four fours whenever I cast creatures, which I do all the time in Samut. Like every that's basically like every turn cast a really good creature and a four four zombie comes along with vigilance. That's really good. I'm just picturing the synergy with any sack outlet and grave crawler on Oketra. See, that's what I mean. As for zombies, but I don't have. I'm still not gonna make it. A, no matter how much the world wants me to, I'm not changing to Verena. All right, let's move on to the finale cycle because we've already been oh, going man. for 40 the, minutes and we haven't even gotten through more cycle. than we've gotten don't through worry. what most, 20 most cards. Of the set, we're, yeah, we we're almost done all the mythics and rares. Anyway, yeah. Um, Everyone's looking at the finales from the when X is 10 or more, but I'm very hesitant to do that. For yeah, that's terrible. Uh, so yeah. I actually fall, fell into that trap with Revelation and Promise because I was thinking both of those could go in Kess, and I'm like, wait a minute. So Finale of the Promise was definitely the card I was thinking of during the podcast that I couldn't name. I was like, oh, yeah. I saw that and thought, oh, Tim Kess, but like maybe nope. it doesn't really have a place. But what do I need it in Kess for? Like, if, it, if it's X or more, like the only thing I would dump that much mana into is Torment of Hailfire. See, this is the thing. This is what happened when I don't read the card. I didn't realize it was you may cast up to one target. I thought it was up to X target. I was like, no. oh, he's just going to dump a ton of mana and cast everything. X is the mana cost, and X it's only two cost. spells. Well, I, I thought it was you cast X spells of X mana cost or less, which made the scaling on this really fucking good mm. and would make it worth being a mythic. But now mm. this just seems like... It just seems like... It's just Snapcaster. I think Electro Dominance is probably still better, and I, I actually no, like the, fell back it's from casting the same Electro thing. It's Dominance. like slap two mana on the cost of an instant sorcery in your graveyard, and you can pay it. Now, like, it's literally the same no, cost as well, playing Well, it is two after. spells, Freeman, because it's up to one target instant and one target sorcery. Oh. All right, so you are getting, all right, so it's better than Snapcast. Yeah. 
And then if, hey, if X is more to than 10, copy those spells twice. Ooh. But at this point, you're like, oh, this is a 12 mana spell. This is ridiculous. Yep. Like in Kess, I'm basically dumping 12 mana into this spell to copy like, what? Like removal or draw twice? Like how good is that? It's not. And this is a sorcery, so you can't even use it to like copy a counter spell. So my, my next question is Finale of Devastation. I'm not really looking at this from the commander perspective. The only thing is I saw it, I'm like, oh, it's it's like Green Sun Zenith for one more mana. Yep. Is and Green Sun Zenith, they've argued, is too busted for modern. The question is, is this too good for modern, or do people just no. keep playing Court of Calling? I think they keep playing Court of Calling. I think they're just gonna keep playing Court of Calling. Chords Chords the I mean, what do you need this for? Like you also I don't know. Like what? Oh, I'm gonna pay like the whole reason Green Sun's too good for modern is because it's a one mana ramp spell with Dryad Arbor. Like as soon as you get into two mana, okay, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, I think that was the top comment that's got split is, oh man, you can fetch Dryad Arbor. And everyone's just like, Jesus Christ, that like, card is causing way too many problems with this game. Yeah, well, it's also like, what? who cares? Like, that you just, like, wow, a removable land for two? Just play Rampant Growth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is... I actually genuinely don't remember if I'm running... Yeah, all I'm running in Silvala is Genesis Wave. I don't even run... What's its face? Um, I will say the one cool thing about this over uh, what's it called? Um, which what the X spell we just said? Green Sun Zenith. The Green one Zenith. thing over Green Sun Zenith that this has is if in Selvala, if I dump a shit ton of mana into it, it gets haste. So this is actually the kind of thing where. This goes on the maybe list for Selvala. Do you have any other, like, tutors in Selvala? No. But that's because most of my tutors don't grant haste. Yeah. Like, this... this The fact that with Selvala, I can dump a shit ton of mana into this and get something like Ulamog and just smash people with haste and make all my other creatures bigger is yeah, really, really fucking strong. Yeah, like, I, I really underestimated the haste on the 10. Freeman, if I dump 12 mana into this, I can get Crater Hoof and have the plus 10, plus 10. Like, that's 2020 haste, boom, trample, you're dead. That yeah. seems that seems strong enough. Uh, Finale of Promise doesn't make the cut and cast. I thought about it originally, but it just doesn't. That deck is too low to the ground. So, the two finales I'm really looking at, Promise and Revelation, both of those would go into Mizzix, because he loves X spells, and they both play pretty yes, well Yes, that's strategies. extremely true. So, he, that's going in there. Um, I Honestly, I don't know where I'd put it, but I think Finale of Eternity is a really good card, just because of how much how much value you can get out of it. This is a three-creature removal card. Honestly, part of the reason I kind of don't want to run it is because the art is back to Derpy Nickel Bull. <laughs> ah, Goblin <laughs> Dragon. Like, as to he looks God. so intimidating in every other piece of artwork, and then this is like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't I like know. I like Glory, but it's just... It's like, what's it? Martial Coup is the same thing. I never have enough mana to cast it for what I Yeah, like, in a creature deck with tokens, like, how often do you just... I mean, it's sick for the amount of mana you could put in, but, like, if you're casting this for 10... Like, okay, I get 10 4-4 four, four angels and 10 soldiers... That's like if, unless I'm playing like a sixty prison power deck or something, you're not getting to twelve mana. I know in any it. kind of deck that's a token deck, unless yeah. you're running like green white token. I wonder if my friends green white tokens, like a green white tokens deck, might run this because they can like use the creatures for mana a lot of the time, like cryptolith cryptolith right and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if there's a, a I know cryptolith right. So I don't know if there's an effect that gives every spell convoke. Uh, Spells you control. I don't think there is. Convoke. I mean, honestly, convoke such a little used keyword. You could probably just search for the word convoke. I did. There's promise. There's like a ton of pages on it. Okay. Oh no, there's actually only one. Hold on. Let's see. Just contains convoke. Um. Let's see. I really don't think there's anything that gives your creatures convoke. But I could be totally wrong. Uh -huh. Let's just search this page for creatures you control. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, Finale of Revelation, yeah. That that was another card I was like, maybe in Kess, but then again, 12 mana is a really big asking price in Kess. Yeah. Kess would rather cast three spells than one giant spell. 
I also realized that the most expensive spell I'm willing to cast normally is Time Spiral, and Time Spiral pays for itself and is busted in Kess. And yep. is even more busted with Kefnet. Dude, when I saw Kefnet and I was like, wait a minute, I can cast Time Spiral and keep Time Spiral in my deck with Kefnet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, um, a, I want to take a short two-minute break right before we jump off of the not-so-exciting mythic cycle. Okie doke. All right, I'll be right back. Okie doke. Hey, everybody. H hey, hello, chat. Sorry, we've just been chugging through. We're going pretty slow, but uh, we're about to start ripping through these cards because there's way less stuff that we care about coming after the mythics and rares at the top. I don't even know if anybody's here. We got like five people. Ah, whatever. Hey, everybody. We're here to mostly uh, talk about the set, but also just help me find ways to make my decks better because I, got, I must have stronger decks. I can't believe I have to cut Torrential Gear Hulk. This fucking sucks. What the hell? So what are you guys' thoughts about this set? Uh, Cypher, that's what... We're, I mean, we're kind of working our way card by card. We're, like I said, we're going to accelerate, but... This set's really fucking cool. Like, the uncommon planeswalkers and stuff is awesome. Um, the the power level seems to be really high. Like, I, I went into this thinking, oh, there's like three cards I want to... And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe, 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 maybe these are really good. I mean, we are at the Mythic Rares. Mythic Rares are usually pretty freaking powerful, but... Um, there's There seems to be a lot of really good stuff in this set. It's really exciting. I, I, my commander, uh, my commander group here in Utah and I almost said Utah here in Ohio uh, was talking about buying a case of this. And I'm like, I'll buy singles still. <laughs> singles are still the thing I buy. Not, not this, not these, uh, unnecessary packs that I'm never going to, cause man, packs are such a trap. It's so bad. <laughs> Sounds like Friedman's on his way back. All right, I'm back. Wahoo. All right, so the triumph cycle. Uh, none of these are going to get played in Commander, end of story. This is just like the uh, defeat cycle, which is why it's funny. Uh, I w actually, scratch that. Scratch that. There is one of these that might see play in Commander. Can you um, guess? I mean, Liliana's triumph is just good. It's. Oh, no, I didn't mean that just... at all. It's just an everyone edict for only two mana. I mean, there's also uh, Innocent Blood, which is one mana, but it's not an instant, I guess. I guess an instant's not bad. Okay, there's instant a second one. You can wait until someone plays something big. And, and also, like, decks that don't care about... Like, I know a lot of decks will run the... Hello, um, Devin. Like, what's it called? The three the Fleshbag Marauder effect. Like, they'll run yeah. them just for this. The problem uh, but they is... they don't give a shit about the creature. I guess, but I feel like most decks in Commander that run Fleshbag run Fleshbag because he's a creature, like my zombie yeah, deck. Yeah, a lot of ones that care about either creatures dying or being zombies. But if you have a black deck that doesn't care about zombies, I think Liliana's Triumph might be better than that. I guess, yeah, that's fair. Um, but that's not or, actually the one I was thinking of. But you're right, Liliana's Triumph is probably the up there for the top two, in Commander especially. Because uh, the Jace's Gideons aren't as good. What? What? Wait, you're talking about Nissa's? Yeah, pretty sure searching up two basics for two mana to your hand is actually crazy good. And the then if you have is, a Nissa, would you which... do that versus a rampant growth though? Yeah, I feel like in a lot of situations you might. Plus, if you have a Nissa, getting Tron to your hand seems good. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like any. Oh, you're great... right. It goes to three lands on three bases. Yeah, that 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 uptick because most the, the green decks. Green decks running Tron in in Commander. No, I know, but and, like most green... modern, getting too green is backbreaking. But you can get like Nykthos. Yeah. Like this seems crazy. Like so many green decks that are either primary, like just green, or like a two color green deck, run Anissa Planeswalker if they ramp or something like that. Yeah. And I feel like this is. This, this is definitely going to like landfall focused decks. Like anytime you can yeah. get more than one land into your hand, it's really nice. Especially because it just keeps your landfall going for like. Well, assuming you play the land this turn, this keeps your landfall going for two more turns. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Cipher, that's actually what we're doing right now. As we're going through these, I'm upgrade. I'm live putting cards in commander decks uh, that are worth running. 
So there are definitely things that we've come across that are worth doing. Uh, the Bond of Cycle, while not super duper good, especially the fucking red one. I love the flavor. I don't love the effects. The flavor is amazing. The flavor is so great. Uh, I actually have thought about Bond of Insight and Kess because it's literally Demir and it's actually self mill and drawn. So I, Demir. I thought of that one first. I'm like, nah, Tim has way better cards to run. I than do this though. One. That's kind of the problem. There's such better cards. Like, uh, I mean, like the white one's pretty bad. I mean, the the white one's okay. You get to attack and gain some life, but. Um, but you don't even get vigilance. Uh, the black one, uh, the black one. I'm excited because I'm, I'm thinking about trying to brew some standard self mill shit and use bond of revival to just bring back whatever you mill. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the know. idea. It's just a yeah. reanimate that gives ha that that like gives haste, but a lot of the yeah, well, no, it's... I guess, I guess the really cheap reanimates don't give haste, but usually when you're running reanimate, you don't care about haste. Yeah, you, you just have, care about you have like an ETB. Cards that give you this effect. Yeah, Bond of Insight's something I would consider if I was more budgety on my cast, but my cast is supposed to be so tuned to absolute nonsense. Uh, Bond of Passion is so overpriced. I'm Bond not of Passion, playing it's that like, anytime. why? Why, why did you overcharge for this? Yeah. Like, you took a four drop and a one drop and made it six? What? I can understand the idea, but then you have, like, Bonds of Flourishing that's, like, any permanent from your top three and gain three. I think it was they were trying to go for Active Trees and they slapped on Shock, and if you go by pure mana cost, that's exactly what this is. Yeah, but Active Trees is a four drop. That's six. Oh, I thought it was five. Hold on. Is no. It really only... Actually, actually, I lied. Active Trees is a three drop. All right, good. That's why I played in that one. Day. Yeah, so this is just way too overcost. Way... And Active Trees and Shock are both commons. Yep. Yep. God terrible all right more uncommon planeswalkers uh literally none of these are things i'd run jang yang goo is actually kind of cool in the right deck um, he might go into izuri but there's no way <laughs> yeah that's izuri. definitely a possibility having Tip another to having another one one counter source is nice but he doesn't do it that much and the there's better ways to get your creatures into mana dorks like even just playing cryptolith Rishkar does a better job of this. Yeah, it's a question good. of do you run Rishkar or do you run this? And you probably run Rishkar because he's a creature. Yeah. Um, plus, Tybalt's he can make mana. We'll talk about him. Tybalt's uh, actually probably better than the original, but uh, actually, no, I lied. The original's probably better. But this one's I, no. You yeah. You're not playing the dinosaur at the same cost as stops your opponents from gaining life. That's true. That's true. Uh, Command the Dead Horde. I actually think this card's pretty terrible. Considering uh, for... The life loss can be crazy if you're trying yeah. to actually good things. Um, I mean, you can pick, but, like, why not just run... What's the card for seven for one more mana? What is it? I know what you're Rise of the about. Dark Realms. Yeah, or does that one cost go. nine or something? It costs a lot, but it's it's game winning. Yeah, like... like, like it's worth its cost. Command the Dread Horde either stabs you for shit tons of damage to get, like, two good things... Like what? You pick a six drop and a five drop. You just dealt eleven to yourself. Even in commander, that's a heavy toll. That's yeah, that's a lot. Whereas you just run something like either a one drop reanimate, which is so much cheaper mana, or you run like the what did I just say? The only Rise thing the though is if if you have the right combination of things, you can spend almost all your life to bring back like anything. I guess. So the if, only if thing that like, makes this, this card is like playable a is the word paradise, but I don't think it's great. The only thing that makes this card playable is the word planeswalker on it. Yes. That's 100% what makes it. Good. Uh commence the end game. Hey look, it's the first amass card and I'm pretty sure we're going to say every amass card is bad. Yeah, that's uh, a bad. That is a bad card. I don't like this. Draw 2 and then it's, amass it's X draw two like and you get like even if Maybe hypothetical a five, five. scenario, you open the turn with seven cards in hand and you draw this card, and then you play this, and then you have nine cards. You paid six mana to draw two cards and make a nine nine. And keep in mind, it's a, it's a token. Tokens have problems in command. This thing does yeah. not have trample. If it gets bounced, it goes away. The only good thing about this is that if you already have the army, you just made it bigger, and then it can still attack. Yeah, that's that's the one. Upside. But like, what blue? Like what deck amounts. runs this? Like, Commanded. who who plays this card? Who's that's this for? Thing. A mass is most just because of the flavor involved here. A mass is not coming back as a mechanic anytime soon. No, so you're not going to get synergy elsewhere. Yeah, and most likely it is a six drop. Hey, look, uh, draw two, two, two. Yeah, this is ass. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Ignite the Beacon. Hey, look, Super Friends. Wow, you got more tutors. Yeah, it's really awesome. It's card advantage on an instant. I, it's it's good for certain decks. Oh, yeah, I forgot it's like, instant, actually. Like, no, Sissi is my tutor. I don't need this. Yeah, you don't need this at all. Uh, Ravnica at War. This is a commander staple immediately, but I'm not going to run it in any of my decks. My only concern is, like, I've seen some people suggest the idea that before you play commander, you have, like, a sideboard and get to, like, pick based on what you know other people's commanders are. Like, if you're playing against a monocolor deck, this is a super dead draw, which kind of sucks. Yeah, but exiling for four is worth the risk. I it's, mean, yeah, it's pretty good, especially if you're like a mono white. The only reason, oh man, like this would actually almost make the cut in SRAM. I'd consider it, yeah. It, Shit, the I wasn't even thinking it, about that. The idea behind it, it's it's a board that doesn't fuck up your commander. Like yep. wiping your commander, especially in SRAM, sucks. But the risk is that if someone else has mono and that's what's hurting you, it's yeah, still a bad draw. That, that, but that sucks with the card advantage this this spell doesn't get you it doesn't but, help you keep just ripping artifacts off the top but so graveyard can, though it's a risk oh wait the... a minute oh my god i replaced this with mass calci mass calcify with this holy shit i for forgot i was running Does mass, mass calcify, calcify just destroy all non-white yeah oh my god that was oh, it's seven right Jeez. yeah yeah, yeah. oh my oh, wow wow spot. wow there we go we found the we found the line <laughs> I don't think I even run Mass Calcify. Oh, shit, Let me no. check this. Let me double check. Oh, my God. I, yeah, wow. We figured it out. We found the line. Um, Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's so much that better. Was um, Thibble Thip. A best commander ever printed. I can't believe they actually printed this. I mean, he's... he's Look, it's the Land of War. It's a Elvish Mystic on a commander. For those of you who want to play mono blue but don't like anything about normally playing mono blue, congrats. You can <laughs> draw the, a card and just play the, the rest big, of your deck as is. Or the big, big memers. <laughs> uh, deliver on to evil. That's a card I considered for fucking curse. <sighs> I love the art on this. That's kind it's, of the problem. It's, it's so gorgeous. Look, Seb McKinnon's still fucking killing it. <sighs> I'll, I'll add it to the maybe board. because I don't know if I'm going to play it. Deliver unto evil. That's a cool card. Wait, what? The card? I don't understand how deck stats is working. The cards are actually showing up when I do direct card entry. I don't. I don't get it. I guess you just can't search for the set yet. I guess, but who the fuck? Whatever. This is stupid. This is stupid. <laughs> yeah, finale of devastation. Now I can move it to the maybe board. Cool. All right, uh, yeah, deliver unto evil. I mean, factor fictioning from your graveyard, even with your opponent picking, but if you control a Bolas Planeswalker, although I will say, Kess used to run three Bolases and is down to one. So, I don't know. Yeah, it might not. But it's still, I mean, it's still really good. Um, all right, we can start picking up the pace, because not, not, yeah. the rest of the cards aren't all that amazing. Dreadhorde Arcan is cool. Uh, Awakening the v Gazi actually seems crazy good. Yeah, this seems really strong. Making one of your of the, lands, uh, especially in like a lands deck, making it into a 9 9 is crazy. Yeah, it reminds me a lot. Just the, all that power five mana reminds me a lot of the Gear Hulk from Aldash, which I thought was insane when it came out. Uh, also, you can put it on uh, Ink Moth and animate it for one and then attack, and it's lethal. Yeah. And the idea behind this is like all of those effects on lands that say it's a creature until end of turn. I think this effect supersedes it because it's always a creature because of this effect. Mm hmm. Plane wide celebration. I'm not going to run it, but it seems like the most commander card ever. It's. I'm really yeah, glad so. they're doing more modal spells where you get they're expensive, but you get to repick things. That's that's awesome. I think every time you cast this for the middle two, uh, like you do like return two, proliferate two, or whatever. Uh, you only run this in a proliferate deck, and you probably proliferate at least once every time you cast this card. Yeah, the the, the versatility is insane. The cost is high, but I think it's worth it for how much value you could potentially get out of this card. Yep. Uh, Krenko. Hey, look, you put him in Krenko. Yeah, it's, or you run him. It's cool. Instant add to mono red goblins. Dreadhorde invasion. I think people can run that card. Uh, I. It's definitely not a bitter blossom, but it is actually really cool. It has the potential to to beat out bitter blossom. You don't have the evasion on the tokens, but the idea is if once once you get it big enough, you can gain back life to mitigate the original loss. Now, the one life gaining commander is not that big of a problem. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I Honestly, I think they could be run together if you're looking for that kind of effect. 
that's probably the best a mass card we have to be perfectly honest oh it definitely is um i don't want to talk about this card what narcissist reversal because i have to have to run this in kess oh my god this card is too good Two the mana. I saw blue, 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 I'm like, yes, they just printed a new counter spell and didn't want to call it counter spell for some reason. I never copy really target instant or sorcery, then return it to its owner's hand. You may choose new targets for the copy. This is like a spell version of Kefnet, and it's so good. The thing is, it's it's the idea behind this is this card is only as good as the other spell you're casting. Now that said, it can be your opponent's but the spell. Fa- yeah, you know, that's pretty nice. God, the fact so- that I can recast my own spell or steal an opponent's spell is so. The thing is, it's 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 two things. It's either it's either counter your opponents and get it for two. Actually, no. If you copy an interest source and then return the target to return it to its own hand, is the spell still on the stack? No, it's countered. It's like remand. You look at well, what is the wording on? Isn't it counter target spell then return it to its owner's hand? Yeah, but this this also hits uncounterable spells. Well, no, but I'm just saying this effect isn't a counter spell. It's just a copy. Like your opponent still gets their spell. Yeah, but they also get it a second time. No, it is a counter. It does. It stops it's the card from resolving. It does not. The, remand yeah. is re, remand reads counter target spell. If it's countered, put it into its owner's hand instead of their graveyard. This one says copy instant sorcery, then return it to its owner's hand. But, but this still happens beforehand. It. Freeman, if your think, spell no, is I, on the stack, that means it hasn't resolved yet. This bounces it back to their hand before it resolves. I don't think it cancels the effect. All right, we got to go to gatherer. If only we could. I don't think they're up on gathering. Oh, they definitely are. What? Are you kidding me? How is this possible? How is it not on here? What the fuck? All right. Does Mythic Spoiler have anything on this? So it copies a spell and then bounces it with means uncounterable spells on Isochron Scepter. Yeah, it's really good. Uh. No, 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 no. It's sort of remand because it, yeah, it Freeman. I'm pretty positive. Yeah, because the I idea, feel- the idea is also you can back, uh, you can counter, you can cast it on your own storm card, and the storm trigger happens, but the original okay, card right. doesn't it's, happen. It's returning, it's returning the spell to the owner's hand, not the card to the owner's yeah. hand. Yeah, if I return the card, the spell would still remain on the stack without the card. Yeah, it's the spell. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm misinterpreting this. That's okay, why it's so, so good, because it that's why people were saying for Modern, if you cast this on an opponent's Thought Seize, you get to bounce their Thought Seize back to their hand and then, and then target them with the hand. Thought Seize. Yeah. Oh, what, but what do I got? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to cop. I don't know what to cut, Friedman. I don't know. Like... I'm I'm honestly totally not sure. Like the closest I can think is increasing vengeance, Be- but that's like a win condition in and of itself. I don't know if if you don't have anything that feels weak. I don't think this improves the deck more than just playing out your strategy. But it's Narset, and it's so cool. <laughs> I understand that, but it's also not a Narset deck. You're not winning flavor points here. I just. I feel like it's so good yeah, that it should go in here. Good just because of the buyback, though. Increase it? You mean flashback? Oh, I, I completely misread that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the idea is with Kess, you cast Red Red and copy it twice. Like, I've won games off that before plenty of times. Just that copy. Yeah. It's... Vengeance is too good for Kess with just the synergy. I wouldn't cut it for Narcissus Reversal. Mm-hmm. Whatever. You'll find something eventually. I'll add it to the maybe board. As much as I don't want to, I feel like it should be in there, but... What? Is Narset's Reversal not even? There it is. That's weird. I was, like, not adding it to Kess. Um, Alright, that's on the maybe board with 23 other cards for Kess. <laughs> uh, Cypher's asking what decks you run, Friedman, for Commander. Uh, so I, I had a list of ones I was looking into, so... I... I have five color slivers. I'm building Carlos Eldrazi. I have five color dragons. That's not tuned. I owned a. It's essentially Esper Super Friends, but it's an Alora Life Game deck. Um, I have Queen Marchesa, which kind of sucks. Uh, Tim and I built the Nico Volas themed deck, which is obviously going to put the new Nico Volas in it. 
Um, but I live in two color land. That's where my favorite decks are. So it's Captain Sisse for Legendary Tribal, which is not really updated for Planeswalkers. It's still just most. Yeah, you never creatures. updated it for that rule. Um, I built blue green Merfolk after I played Kumena in Standard and realized how crazy cool all of her tap effects are. Um, I bought super hard into the experience counter commander, so I have Mizix, blue green Izuri, black white Daxos, and then uh, Marin of Clan Neltoth, just because I love the experience counter, just recurring value. And the only one you're uh, missing is in my Samut deck. <laughs> yeah, the red white one. I saw. I'm like, nope, not playing this one. But <laughs> it's not the red one. One's not great as a commander, but they're great as a standalone card. Yeah, in, they're, in they're... certain strategies, especially when you have um, Audric. And then in mono color, I'm really into Feldman the Third Path right now because I love this mono red reanimator. And then I straight up copied him and made a SRAM deck because it was pretty Hell funny. yeah. Ours are different, but yeah. They're, yeah, they have, they have differences to them, but I hate playing the mirror because it's usually whoever goes first wins. Yeah, that's how we <laughs> found it out when we did that one night where we did like four one-on-ones in a row. It was yeah. it, it was pretty crazy. Um, Anyway, uh, single combat. This card seems hilarious. I don't think anyone's going to play it, but the flavor is really good. Yeah, I love the flavor of it. Um. Tomic, distinguished. Uh, look, a so, lands card in white. So it's funny we brought up uh, SRAM just now because part of the idea of what I like about SRAM is have a way to play the deck when he's dead. Uh, so I have a couple, I think I have like three other creatures in the deck that could potentially just pick up all the equipment. One of them is um, that guy who has prote protection from black and green from Mirrodin Return. Um, double strike protection black. Anyway, point is. I picked creatures with great keywords. So, like, there was one guy printing Kaladesh who's... Everyone call him, like, the white um, Nightdale Hawk or something. Mm -hmm. He has, like, Flying Vigilance Lifelink. Um, and attaching equipment to him is great. And with Tomic, for two mana, you get a 2-3 flyer that's not bad. Slap equipment on him. He's got the evasion. Uh, oh. I do like him because he does have some... He has graveyard hate. That's actually not a terrible point that he's a really good SROM card because he's just a really good value cheap white creature. Yeah, he's definitely, I consider him as like what huh. I call the backup commander, especially in Voltron decks, having just someone who's like cheap and has um, evasion is nice to have hmm. as like a backup commander. That's actually not a terrible point. I actually really like that. <laughs> Shit. I did not even consider that. That's actually yeah, brilliant. And he's, and he's one mana cheaper than my equivalent 2 3 flyer. So he might, he's probably going to go in. I don't expect him to do that. Yeah, I'll put him in the maybe board for my SROM deck. I'm not sure where he'd go, but that's awesome. Uh, Spark Double, copy Planeswalkers or Creatures is really, really good. Uh, just another great clone card. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good clone. Massacre Girl is like the coolest fucking thing in the set. The art's amazing. And I'm it's not playing it, but it's definitely zone. a cool card. Yeah. Um, New Neheb is probably going to go in my buddy's old Neheb deck, but not replace him as the commander. But it's a really good card, actually. Yeah, he, we were talking about this. He's probably going to go into uh, Felden for me, just because when if you reanimate him with Felden, you just can wheel your hand at that point, yep, and that's which like is exactly the what best you want. thing Felden can do. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, now we're in Uncommons. Uh, we'll just Johnny's go... Pride, man. I can't believe they printed this card. I've never seen this card before. This is so <laughs> insane. Uh, Elder <laughs> Spell is the kind of thing that is not going to get played that much, but is really cool that it exists. If yeah, Planeswalkers it's a little, get too it's a much. little too narrow for Commander, just because, like, yeah. Planeswalkers are great, but you don't always see a pla multiple Planeswalkers every Vraska's game. Contempt is run... I I'm I run that in Kess, and I'm not cutting yeah. it for this at all. Um, Augur Bolas, cool new art. Uh, so there's there's this cycle going on kind of split around here of these creatures that amass and then give zombie tokens a keyword. And yeah. the entire time this is getting spoiled, I'm like... Oh, it's just like the what were the the golem cards from uh, yep. Marin and Block, and no one made that comparison in any of the discussion threads. Freeman, look, Prison Realm is another O ring. <laughs> so the only thing is, it it only hits creatures and planeswalkers. I know, kind of sucks. Um, at first, I'm like, wow, they just straight up invalidated O ring with this guy. One, I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't hit like enchantments or artifacts, and I'm like, oh, you know, that's that can be kind of relevant, especially when I play against decks that run um. Was it Dark Steel Forge? Yeah, those kind of things. <laughs> yeah, um, it's up for consideration. I don't know if it's an instant swap into like Daxos. Uh, Paradise Druid's actually going to go in my Samut deck. I already have a spot picked out for it because it has a really cool looking promo and it's a better two drop uh, mana creature than one of the ones I already have in there. Um, Storm of the Citadel, I actually thought about, but it costs too much mana. But it's really cool. Yeah, Mass Destroy on creature combat's a neat thing to do. Neat, but I don't um, 
Uh, Sunblade Angel, it's way too much mana and not strong enough, but it's really oh, fucking cool that it has so many keywords on it because in an, an Audric deck probably runs that card. Yeah, it's, it's made for Audric. It's the only deck I'd consider I, running it. Like, I have Audric in Samut, and he's a really good win condition, but uh, I would not run this card in Samut just for I think that. For like, there's, there's angels for like one less that have similar keywords, and there's ones for yeah. one more that have better keywords. Like yep. It's kind of in an awkward spot. That's exactly correct. Uh, Price of Betrayal is really, really, really cool in that really it can weird. basically kill a, a Planeswalker, potentially, or it can... Um, uh, what else? Or it can remove experience counters or poison counters from opponents, although you can't remove it from yourself. But basically when people those... play limited, this kills a mass armies. That's true, too. That's true, too. Um... Oh, yeah. For... Cypher, we'll probably do streams of fighting each other in Commander because we just haven't played Commander in so long against each other. But yeah. we just have to find time. That's been the rough uh... part of any of our games lately. Yep. Uh, especially with our Sundays being taken up by Game of Thrones, but that's only going to last another five weeks, including tomorrow, so... Yeah. Um, real quick, our Boreal Grazer. This is a pretty shitty card. Oh, wait, um, is it? I'm not Let's playing it. it. Yeah, you skipped past it. It was on the same road. Yeah, I've just been lighting. flying through. Um, oh, yeah. This isn't, this isn't a card I'd play for Commander or even Modern, but I play the Gates deck in Standard, and... When... Oh, you're getting... Yeah, of course. Yeah, during, during rotation, we lose some of the early interaction. Like, what's that... The the really good explore creature, the two mana, two one. Yep, uh, the merfolk. Um, yeah, I know what you yeah. mean. So that's a great early card that you can try and force on the second turn if you don't play a gate. But the thing about Arboreal Gra Grazer is first turn you play a gate, second turn you play him and you get another gate in your hand. So you kind of basically cantrips for what matters in this deck because you just want more lands. Yeah, because you don't care about the lands entering tapped. You just care about getting the lands on the field so they can yeah, untap. You just want more lands because you play late game anyway. So he's. I yep. saw him and I'm like, yes, best card in the set. And then I sat there and I can't believe I said that. <laughs> but I was excited when I saw that comment printed. Um, I'm already multiple rows down. Uh, Contentious Plan's really cool because it's a draw card proliferate spell, which is basically Tezzeret's Gambit for one less mana but draw one less card. Yeah, the only thing I play Tezzeret's Gambit in is in uh, Mizzix just for the proliferate. Yep. You end up getting like double counters on, on it for and the most part. you could run this too. Yeah, Contentious Plan. I, I saw that and I'm like, alright, sweet. Every turn it's just one mana. Like, so in Mizzix, you always get the reduced cost on Contentious Plan pretty much all the time. And so you're always getting a counter. You're always drawing a card. For one blue, it's great. I'd run that cantrip. We are probably getting to the point where we're not going to look at any of these commons. No, we're going to jump ahead probably down Gide to the multi Gideon section. Sacrifice is a very, very flavorful card. And it's very sad for the story of the set that we learned the other day. But... I'm just looking through the, the It works really great case. if you have an indestructible creature. Like, if you run old Tajik as your commander, yeah. this is great, because you can prevent anything else or you from taking damage. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's funny that it doesn't talk about him losing indestructible, but that's how it has to work. Yeah. Um, yeah, most of these commons aren't super vital. Wanderer's Strike is really cool as a five-drop sorcery that exiles a creature and proliferates, because proliferate is just really good yeah um do, do, do. okay multicolors back to mythics and rares that we got to talk about for strong a while cards. back to good shit um nico bolas so, the dragon nico god so he's going it's my nico bolas deck uh friedman so this is the conversation i wanted to have with you i am currently running nico bolas god pharaoh in my cast deck I loosely remember his abilities. I just want to have it in front of me. As I, as I, I figured. That's why I'm waiting. Well, actually, I don't need to say anything. You know what the question is. <laughs> yeah, it's do you... So here's the thing. It's You can play him earlier, but the mana is a lot more restrictive. That said, I but... know you have, you have OG duels in that deck. So you, <laughs> your, your, mana, your mana situation is not much of a problem. In My mana situation probably is about as good as a monocolor deck in this deck. Yeah. Um, damn, I gotta start running back to basics and commander now. Um, no, that's why I run what that's why <laughs> that is why I run one mountain in Kess because I know someday I'll run into someone with a fucking blood moon or something and I'll need the one basic mountain that doesn't fuck me. I mean, with, or like with back blood to basics, I know, I know, mountain, but, but like but back to basics. basics or something is gonna yeah. like what's the unbit like non basics don't untap or something like winter orb or something. No, not winter orb, uh, it's something like that. I've you know what I mean though, it, but I know what you're talking about. But it's like fucking hell. Yeah, but anyway, is so, Dragon God worth? So the thing about Nico Bolas is because of his static, you want it in a Planeswalker-heavy deck. 
Uh, just I run five. With... Sorry, let's look at him in a vacuum, and then <laughs> well, your, what are your five? Uh, All right, my four blocks? others besides Nickel Ball is Godfair because he would get cut for it. Ral is it Viceroy? Jaya Ballard, know. Jace the Mind Sculptor, Dak Faden. Um. <laughs> Hold on one second. I, I'm pretty sure I remember all of Ral's abilities off my off top of my head. Uh, it's but, the plus right, to know, yeah, plus one minus three. All right, I'm just looking at like the actual numbers. Yep. So his his actual ability numbers line up exactly to Bolas. Yep. Um, do any of those have a bigger plus? Nope. They're all, all plus, plus one. one, except for Godfar, but he'd be cut. Except for, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, unless I cut like a creature and went like another planeswalker. <laughs> so here's the thing: God Pharaoh for seven mana is really, really good. Fucking great. <laughs> for, for, so let's evaluate God, God Dragon. Assuming you don't have another planeswalker in the battlefield to copy, you're just talking his three abilities. He comes down with four loyalty. He can either immediately destroy something. He <sighs> that draw effect. Honestly, just for his plus one alone is just so. <laughs> Good advantage. <laughs> it's worth playing alone just with plus one. <laughs> then that said, I don't I don't think it, everyone thinks his minus eight is game breaking, but the problem is you have to deal with other people's legendary creatures. Yeah, it's nothing. It does nothing. Old. It's not an instant win. No, so not at all. Bosses, you're like honestly, playing him for the minus three sucks. It's it's like look, you may need to answer <laughs> something, but if you're playing him immediately minus three, wow, that sucks. But the plus one is just it's not the best advantage it's ever. It's so good. Everyone it's permanently like loses. Card, everyone else is down. Not even just a card, but just it's, a resource. Yeah. You don't even pretend that. that, like, oh, not even a graveyard deck is like, oh, good. It's like, everybody, you're down a car. So let's evaluate God Pharaoh. Yep. The turn he comes down, you've probably spent seven mana to cast him, so it's plus two. And you definitely plus two him. You cast it. Wait, you, no, you, you get it for free, dude. You know, I gotta read these cards more often. Yeah, so his plus two is amazing. <laughs> you generally don't really want to plus like if you're when you're casting for seven mana, unless you're against like a control deck that's holding just a clutch right now, plus one is usually not that great because everyone's usually low on cards. It well, be good but the other thing just, is, yeah, it's like get, hey, if you see someone with two cards, you're like, I don't want to risk you doing something, yep. discard those now. Exactly. Like, hey, is everyone around two or three cards? All right, swunk. Now you have one resource max. All right, his minus four. For God of Pharaoh, it's useless. it does what's essentially a similar thing. No, unless not even close. Opponent, it's terrible. Unless your opponent has an indestructible creature, you're generally going to blow up their planeswalker. Um, so it boils down to can it destroy the creature, and if the, you don't want to, you can dome someone's head. Uh, so, I've almost never minus foured him in my entire life. I mean, if your opponent's at if your opponent's at seven life, he's that's his. You he minus basically four Freeman. Let me tell you, when I cast him, maybe I plus one him once. Usually, it's plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two. And the thing with God Drag or God Pharaoh is his ultimate pretty much wins you the game. Yeah, that's no there's no pussyfooting that's around a, with this maybe you lose. It's this is so, over. I wanna say that God Pharaoh, in terms of just abilities alone, is a better planeswalker, but Correct. at the same time, God Dragon comes down two turns earlier. But as soon as someone else has value, another planeswalker. Like you, don't need, like you don't even need God Dragon <laughs> to win. God Dragon enables the rest of your deck to just function better. <laughs> Now, if you had both at the same time... So, here's the thing. Two, I'm but... wondering if maybe I need to... I love Dire Fleet Daredevil. I love Dire Fleet Daredevil. But, like, honestly, maybe it doesn't hold up compared to everything else. That's the one where it's a Snapcaster from an opponent's graveyard. But, uh, like... Oh, yeah. The only thing is it's really cheap. Um, but, Freeman, but here's again, the thing. run into the issue that your opponent doesn't have anything worth casting. Exactly. Usually, most of the time when I cast Dire Fleet Daredevil, I steal an opponent's ramp spell, but that's, like, five mana anyway, and or I could have the God Dragon God. Yeah. If you want to afford to play, like, a <sighs> like a slightly slower strategy just because of the one card, I definitely say Nicole Balls is a I'm good so cut I'm so sorry, Dire Fleet, my the friend. The advantage you get off of it. The advantage you get off of playing balls is plus one. Like, even if, let's say, you play an empty board and you know your opponent's going to eat it, I'd say it's for what it's doing, the it's draw better. card and everyone exiles, it's worth it for five mana. That's a And as soon thing. as someone has a really good planeswalker on the. Or, like, if I have any. Like, if yeah, I have God opponent's planeswalkers. Too. Every planeswalker is mine. Like, I keep forgetting it's all, not just yours. Hey, Freeman, what if I have Dak on the field and then I cast God Dra Dragon God off of a ramp thing I stole with Dak and then I tick up Dak and then I minus <laughs> Dragon God to steal another artifact? Like, what the <sighs> fuck? 
so good. Yeah, it's really good. See, but Freeman, here's the thing. This is another reason that I'd have to buy the Mythic Edition. <laughs> Oh, just for the really nice just, looking one. Just for another. Tri- I mean, this one looks really cool, but like, the, the uh, only problem is I'm, I look at the Mythic Edition Nico Ball Dragon, and the problem is it looks like those. You ever go on eBay and you look up proxy cards? People just print like the most. Oh yeah, dude, they, they, they do. Like, all this, the this one time. in particular looks like a fake card. Like, yeah, it does. That's the only problem I have with. <laughs> dude, if I actually did that change, I would run Nico Bolas, Nahiri, and Jace, and then still have a Sark. I can't believe they picked Sark on Unbroken. Uh. Sarkon, Garrick, Tezzeret, Gideon, and... Ooh, maybe even Gideon would go, like, in Srom. <laughs> I don't know. The pro- He's a three-drop indestructible. He is, and you can give Srom indestructible that turn. He's... <laughs> I don't know, though. Like, he doesn't fit, like, your artifact draw. Like, you play him, you I know, I know. off him. It's problematic. I'm just thinking if I got Mythic are we Edition. Just lo- are we just looking at the Mythic Edition ones real quick? No, we don't even have to. We don't. Right. They, they're not even in the set. Anyway, we we still have. We've been going for almost an hour and a half, and we still. Need, right, okay, let's, let's Dragon God is probably going to replace Dire Fleet Daredevil. As much as I'm sad because I love that card, because uh, Snapcastering opponents' graveyards, but with graveyard hate around or like anything, like either I steal ramp, maybe I steal a decent spell, but usually it's it's it, sometimes it can just be a dead card, and it it's a fake two drop. It's a fake two drop because you never cast it for two. Yeah. Um. Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge. Hey, look, this is the this is the card that might threaten Nicol Bolas for best Planeswalker in the set. Yeah. This so card is way too good. There's yeah, so I, much. You're not going to see too much... Um, oh, crap, it's Planeswalker. Supposed to be. The problem is there's not a lot of artifact action going on in Standard right now. So Oh, in Standard, this does nothing. So in Brea, this would have been this, great. <laughs> so this is the buy box promo for the set. So everyone was really concerned, like, oh, God, is there going to be another next to fate? Tezzeret is too expensive for Modern. He's not applicable in standard right now, but he's perfect for commander. He's so good at commander. So I think this is a really great buy a box promo. Oh yeah, it's amazing. It's basically like, sort of like Sunspeaker, except Sunspeaker is not anywhere near as good as his card. But it's Suns, but it's also like Sunspeaker, interesting. Yes, this is a very cool card. So this is this, this card, is your like, top you end. This is your reward for the... playing a bunch of artifacts. This, like you play yeah. this in Brea, which I don't play anymore because I took it apart, but like. I would rebuild Brea just to run Tezzeret Master of the Bridge because this card's so fucking cool. Like, I want to... Like, at first, like, this card's busted. Then I'm like, oh, but it's, like, balance busted. That first effect means you can ramp shit out fast. But the so thing is, fast. you can't... Ty- typically, you can't play him until turn six. And, like, once you get to turn uh, six, I'll say, I'll say it's fair. Friedman. Okay, well, if you're an artifact, you're going to play him. Like, <laughs> you're going to play him on four. <laughs> I'm saying that, like, at turn four, it's okay to start doing busted stuff. Like, <laughs> like if this... You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I think it's Look, just the minus three, busted. The minus three is okay because it returns to hand, but then you can, like, still cast things for free almost if it's, like, an artifact creature. Yeah. Uh, and the mi- plus like is minus, way better. The plus is, what, the minus? It's a guaranteed win. It can whip. So, like, I, yeah. I, as an opponent, feel happy knowing that, like, if you minus eight, it's not a guaranteed But it's you pretty win. good. Like, <laughs> it's pretty fucking close. You're, you know, there's a 90% chance value. You're going to get at least, like, two cards out of this. The point is... He's so cool. It's not so busted that I hate it. No. Like I would It'll command it. a bit of a price because of Commander, but I'm people get one of these. But he's real fucking cool. It also means that I'm looking into more S for uh yep. artifact lists now. Um the a lot of these rare commander rare planeswalkers we actually don't have to talk about as much. Uh yeah. A Johnny, Johnny, I'd consider for Sissi if I went a more Planeswalker oriented build just because he's cheap and he gets the I also don't like minus effect we've been throwing around. I'm also not a fan of basically any deck that wants to run proliferate. I find extremely boring. Like Planeswalker control decks tend to be ugh, so dull. It's either they get out of hand too fast, they fizzle. You f- yep. you know for a fact what happened when you used to play um what's her name Narset. Yeah, that's either gets so out of control real fast. So or boring. Or so boring. Uh, Domri is terrible. I, I think Domri's pretty pretty trash. I think he's not bad for three. Uh, there are certain decks I'd consider. It has to be, like, super aggressive Gruul. Like, this is 1v1. This is, and it's I only would. Gruul. Like, this wouldn't go in Samut. Like, no, at all. No, like, the only other deck I have in Brewing right now is, like, um, Naya, Marith, Will of the Wild. And that one's more, like, it's more value-oriented. He doesn't quite fit in. Like, yes, he ramps. Yes, he, you know, fights against control. But, like, if I'm... Looking for three mana to deal with control, I'm gonna play Rhythm of the Wild from yeah. earlier. Oh, that's so, block. Dude, that that's thing is card. that thing's such an expensive foil because every commander player is like, I need this. Yeah, it's that's just a good card. I love it. 
Uh, um, Ral, I actually like, Ral? but I'm never going to play him. He doesn't make the cut for Kess, which really sucks. But he has infinite combos that can win the game. He's which interesting. Really cool. I don't, yeah, I think you've got other stuff you want going on. Like the, yep. Just to scry one is not the best every turn. You either run him for his... I mean, technically, my Kess deck has the win in it. Uh, because what you do is you cast... You have him on the board. You cast any spell. You target it with... Well, if since I'm not running Narsets, I don't have the copies. But technically, increasing Vengeance plus Expansion Explosion is an infinite win condition if you can cast both. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you copy the original... You copy whatever spell with like Expansion, then you target Expansion with increasing Vengeance, copy it, target itself, blah, 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 and you win the game. Yeah, and you just cycle forever, bam, infinite damage. Yep, but that's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, I without think... that, he's terrible, and I wouldn't do yeah, that. Yeah, just... just... Like in a vacuum, just a just the scry one is not that great. Like yeah. he enables other stuff, but the thing is, if you're already doing those other things, chances are you're probably gonna win. Like his minus two is really cool, down. but you're basically stockpile wasting four mana to stockpile a minus two copy when I'm already running better copy spells. Yeah. Uh, Rolesk sucks. Um, so uh, my problem with Rolesk is it's, it's a die trigger. Yep. I hate that. Like the Rolesk is a good value creature. He's you don't crazy. Want good. your value creatures dying. Yep. But like the the dying well, part is why he, it's a mythic. He breaks the rule of commander where it's like you want this guy in the command zone because you want him to ha you want to always have his ability and it doesn't work with the command zone. Yeah, but he's oh, a good right, but as a support card for a deck with proliferate, it seems really good. Yeah, I he's was a debating on whether this would go into Izuri just because it it slams counters on people. It can proliferate when it dies, but like it doesn't play with Izuri's strategy directly, and I don't like playing five mana and trying to find a way for this creature to die. Uh, Niv Mizzet Reborn, one of the spiciest cards in the set. That I love when they come with cool design space for five color cards. It's such a cool design space, and it's the biggest trap of them all. <laughs> yeah, it's it's shitty. It's not a good card, but it's, it's not a interesting, good card. and I like that. Uh, I think people will build charm decks and go, wait a minute, if I'm in five color, I want to be playing the good five color cards, not two color cards, but across all the colors that don't synergize. I wonder if it's worth slotting into five color dragons because no. with that you do have a, a bunch of two color dragons, so you might end up. I think if you look at it, up. most of them are actually in three or more or one. You're actually like outside yeah, of right. the Tark here, two colors. Actually, what dragons are? Uh, really it's two mostly, color. It's most just the Tark here, two colors. Mm -hmm. Or like original Niv Mizzet and stuff like that, and it's like yeah. who cares? Uh, Teferi is busted. Look oh, at that. Break they my managed. Iron. I'm really pissed. They. <laughs> Yeah, fuck this. Fuck the fairy. He ruined standard. Now he's gonna ruin modern. Wait, he's such actually... a cool character. I was so excited they brought him back. I'm like, no. Is, he's... is this actually a thing that you're serious about? That he's supposed to like? Have people talked about him being busted in modern? Yes. Really? That's awesome. Yes. So oh people, like, God. the idea is you drop him on turn three, and then now it's your opponents <laughs> can't play instant, so none of your shit can ever get countered. Uh, and then. And then you just plus one him, and now all your sorcery speed shit is now instant speed. So you just like it positions control way better than it was if Teferi well, wasn't on the battle. The funny like, thing is, it positions control so good against other control. control. It's, that's the problem. It's a mirror card. Like I don't. This is not me, me. But mirror breaker. Uh, <laughs> this fuck card. Mary. How did they? Uh, how did they manage to print two stupidly good Teferis in a row? It's amazing. They're like, all right, return a ramping up, blue light control, too strong. We can't print these, destroy all creatures, counter all spells, but we like, can't do that. It's like, oh, let's just sneak some strong planeswalkers in. It's, like, this is even harder to deal with than like having Supreme Verdict instead. I don't again. actually know how you beat this card in a control deck when you don't have a counter spell, unless you uh, miss yours on turn three, they play theirs on three, and you Vraska's on four. In which case you still might be fucked because then they just play another one or something and you're so just dead. Just because the threat of this Teferi, no one's going to play shit until they have... They're going to play... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Play their Teferi, and then it's <laughs> counter magic war to see who lands there. Like, that's what the control versus control is going to be. This Teferi can't come down till turn five, which is when the original Teferi can come down anyway, but this time you play him with counter backup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. It's so funny. This card's going to make control matchups hilarious, and it's so stupidly good. That line of text, each opponent can cast spells only in time they can cast a sorcery. <laughs> it's way too good. Sucks. Meanwhile, the other two suck. Uh, Tamiya's not made for commander. Tamiya's not, not made for commander, and she's also not going to see play anywhere else, so... 
Whoops, guess Tamiya as, sucks. As, a, as someone who plays Black White Tokens of Modern, always seeing a Soren's great. Seeing a Soren be bad makes me angry. The, seeing this, seeing Val's favorite character in history, Soren, uh, be bad is depressing as hell. This one's pretty I terrible. Know, it fits in with all of her current, like, gain and drain strategies, but, like, I... You know what you do? If White you're running Black White Gideon Tribal, you actually love this card. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Because <laughs> suddenly all your Gideons terrible. have lifelink. Um, I think this card is you play it when his minus X is. <sighs> We've been railing on Gideon's and Gideon Trial. That's the only thing. You know what sucks? So many vampires have lifelink already. They do. Because otherwise, the minus X for vampire, yeah. The only um, you only ever play is like a Mardu build or something where you're like red planes yeah. walking for the damage. Yeah, I don't know. It feels like Soren needs so much help to be okay, and it's he's just not, like he's not a good card. it's I'm not never worth doing run. that. It's not worth the four mana slot. Um, Bio Essence Hydra is pretty terrible. I don't it's, know why you'd ever it's run a trap. it. It's, everyone said it was really good. Looking like this is, sounds like a lot of hoops to jump through. This is this so many hoops right. to jump through. Like if you're running a Planeswalker yeah. deck, why are you running a four four Trampler that's just big in blue green? Yeah. Even like why? Um. Casualties of War is amazing. It's better decimate, and my, I had to convince one of my planes, one of my one of my planeswalkers, uh, one of my commander buddies. He was like, "But decimates four mana," and I'm like, "Yeah, but in exchange for more color restriction and two more mana, you don't have to blow up your own shit, and you have much more control." Yeah, definitely. And blue green and uh, uh, decimate. You almost never cast early anyway because there's not enough targets, so the mana doesn't matter. And black green is actually going to ramp even better than red green. Um, Dreadhorde Butcher's really cool. It's like I those... like this card. I have nowhere to play it, but I think it's such a cool card. Yeah, it's like um, what are those the Slithes? Those old cards, Slith? the Slithes. Have you seen those? I have no idea what it's you're a mechanic about. called Slith, where it's like the deal damage gain a one one counter. They're a super old card type. MTG Slith. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because there was one of each color. If you search on Gatherer, yeah, there they are. Slith Firewalker. It was from original Mirrodin. Whenever it, it's a one one for oh, well, two yeah. red haste. Whenever it deals damage to a player, put a one one counter on it. Uh, and all the Sliths from Mirrodin did the same thing. And this one has the uh, die effect, and this one also cares about Planeswalker. But it's thing. also yeah, split it's color instead of double. But it's yeah. it's super cool. It's like they it's brought a, this whole. Cool it's a new take on it. Enter the God Eternals is a lot of text for honestly not that good. I I don't so, think it's actually that good. All I remember is watching the discussion going, oh no, it does. It deals four, you gain four, someone puts four cards away, you amass four, it costs five mana. And I'm like, oh no, it's Grizzle Brand all it's over Grizzle again. It's Grizzle Brand all over again. It's one of those, yeah. why not just make it like six, 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 six? Yeah. Uh, Feather so is, numbers. I wonder if Feather's a trap because everyone's buying all these cards. I don't know. I, I, like, I like Feather. I like Feather. I want to build her. Everything's spiking. It's gonna take a while for everyone to yeah. realize that feather. So I was in a, a bunch of discussions. Everyone's like, "Feather's a huge trap." It's one of those commanders where if your commander dies, the rest of the deck doesn't function. That's correct. And I'm suddenly like, "Okay, well, that's all of my decks. That's not really a <laughs> downside to feather." The other cool thing uh, is you can run like mirror wing dragon and uh, that card's Zada hard because of this. I'm Dude, mirror wing dragon line. also looks gorgeous. Like people were waiting. People were waiting, we're waiting for mirror for wing dragon to be good because yeah. it's so pretty. It's it's fun that they're trying to find ways to make Boros have a yep. different angle than just being like we attack. Yep, and it's on an angel, which I love, even though I can't yes. run her in my angels deck, which has Boros in it. Uh, <laughs> um, Soul Diviner, a really cool card. I actually love that card. It's pretty sweet. Uh, Solar Blaze, hey, a board wipe in Boros, sort of. It is. It is nice. It's um, actually funny that no big butts deck has red in it because it'd be perfect. Yeah. Uh, roll reversal is terrible, except when you're running the fucking trade deck. But who cares? Oath of Kaya. Uh, so I'm debating actually, on this for Daxos. It's not the best card, but like here's the thing: anytime something's a low cost enchantment, that's you I'm gotta look at it for Daxos. for Daxos. It can remove something with three toughness, which isn't bad. Its second paragraph may as well not exist on the yep. card for that deck, but it's just it's kind of a, just a mini enabler for the Daxos strategy. It's so a lightning it's helix great. that puts an experience counter on. If you think yeah. about it that way, it's a great card. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Uh, Living Probably Twister is one of those great budget lands cards that people are going to run in a budget land deck and be happy with. And it's yeah, cool. if and when I do angry on that, Living Twister is definitely immediately yep. going in. Uh, Story of I actually think is really good. 
I didn't even notice this card when it got spoiled. I know, Let's I see. think it got spoiled at like the I worst time. Turn him. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's... I don't know if I'd run it as a commander, but it's a really good value for four mana. For Golgari, too, yeah. Yeah. Just returning anything. And it that can even tramp, attack That Plane trample Walkers. makes it so good. The trample makes it good, and the hitting Planeswalkers makes it good. Yeah. Um, time wipe is busted, of course. Another Teferi related yeah. card. Wow, a board wipe that saves your best creature. Cool. All right. Tulsimir kind of sucks. Tulsimir is terrible compared to the old Tulsimir, but you probably yeah. run him in new Tulsimir anyway. Or I old Tulsimir. still anyway. run old Tulsimir in. Um, since I just I think it's a cool like. Someone's gonna build wolves something M and type card. it's gonna be a cute deck and no one's gonna actually lose. To it. That's the problem. It's green white cares about wolves, but werewolves are like green red, and there's not like, like a Naya werewolf. There's like card. there's no Naya wolves and werewolves. <laughs> yeah, it's that's like it's out of place. Uh, widespread brutality is pretty terrible, um, because. I guess it's good in that it's like if you have a big army, but like you put it in the amass deck or you don't run it, and who cares yeah, about and the amass not deck? Yeah, there's not going to be an amass deck. It's certainly not in commander, maybe in standard, but who cares? Uh, Angrath's Rampage is actually crazy good. I actually it's, love this card really for good. modern. I, I hope it sees modern play. Um, making someone it, sac kind of, it kind of runs in the same spot that uh, Culligan's command kind of. Occupies. I understand that, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's still good, but if it's not an artifact, it's great, and if and it's it's also better against like the delve decks and everything that don't rely on two toughness creatures. Like when you have a Gurmag, like Colgan's does nothing. Yeah, sorry, I had to mute myself. I was That's just okay. like crazy. That's okay. Uh, Dovin's Ooh. veto. I wish that was in Grixis so I could play it. Benkes as this a negate, but I can't. This is also ruining control in modern. <laughs> <laughs> Uncounterable negate for white when a Jeskai and blue white deck are already when what they you play negate. the answer to the new Teferi within the own set. It's... <laughs> Why not run both? Yeah, this is just a really it's better negate. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. And there's even a promo of it. Oh my god. Dovin Domery's ambush is bad, whatever, who cares? Um Deep Spark is, is an interesting removal. I don't know. D Spark is instant commander budget staple. Yeah, I don't Instant. know if I'm putting it in any of my current decks. I don't either. Like, but I already it... have, like, Utter End or Vindicate so, everywhere. So, here's the like, problem. A limitation of the four, four or more. Here's the big, big, big problem. In Lycia, the only deck... Because uh, my Taza deck is not running any removal except Angerstone making it instant speed. And I wouldn't cut Angerstone making for this in a, at all. No. In Lycia, I'm running Utter End and Angerstone making... The prop and crush cantraband and disenchant and swords and the problem is they're all pretty promos <laughs> so like what do i <laughs> cut do i cut the gorgeous utter end promo for this card the well is i don't know so much stuff under four cmc that i like dealing with a lot like o-rings can't get hit by this so i wonder if i would cut <sighs> i wonder if i'd cut disenchant for this disenchant feels cuttable possibly that's that's a maybe. I should make a note of that. Um, because disenchant is really good. I mean, th like you said, there's lots of three and worse drops that are scary, but like exiling is always always a big priority for me because there are always going to be graveyard decks running around. Yeah, I'd consider it over disenchant. Uh, Death Sprout is another gorgeous art uncommon budget option that's going to be great yeah it's a little too expensive to yep. run but um, if you have a tuned deck it's too much but if you don't it's gorgeous cool spell. Um, yep like you don't can't afford like i don't know hero's downfall or something cruel celebrant hey look any deck that ran white besides blood and had blood artist and all those effects there you go here's another i one. love watching all these stars i was like is this it is it finally aristocrats time and, and everyone's like nope it doesn't end and up happening like, nope it's never going <laughs> it's be. never gonna happen it's never gonna be uh, Elite Guard Mage. Hey, look, it's uh, a worse... Uh, what's the one from Kaladesh? The... Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. The draw two, gain two. I still think it's not a bad card. It's not a bad it's card. It costs one less mana. It, it, the game, the game three life replaced itself. It's flying. It's it's pretty good. The only problem is it's four mana. If it was three mana, it'd be insane. Uh, Gleaming Overseer. I didn't even realize this is a card. This one is the best like payoff for... But it's also blue, two colors, so that's why. Yeah, that's why it's the best. I also am not going to um, run anywhere because the amass deck just isn't worth it. It's not bad if you're playing like 
you know, like blue blood, or even like Esper zombies. If you have a lot yeah. of two two zombies, that's having, very true. Having menace means that people have to just like block yep. more, block them more effectively. The problem is you have graph harvest, which is just a one man enchantment that gives all your tokens menace. <laughs> like who oh, cares really? about your tokens having hexproof? Yeah, graph harvest. It usually, it usually doesn't matter. Graph harvest only, is actually zombies, not zombie the tokens. Only, the token only matters just because of the whole amass shit. I know, I know. Yeah, it's that's like they, it's like they were scared of making zombies too good, so they had to put zombie token on everything. So, so here's a problem that I have with uh, the no more blocks just sets is they got one chance to make this mechanic work, and they both don't want to make it too weak that it's not played, but they also don't want to make it too strong that it's the only strategy. So we end up with these like half-ass new mechanics yeah. because they know they're not going to print it in the next set to like maybe shore it up if it's not great. Uh, yeah. And that's like that's a problem I have with the new block structure. Like, like I built the it's this deck built entirely around surveil, and I built it as like this budget Demir oh, deck. Oh god, standard. I wish we're not getting another back. like surveil oh, set. Dude, so I wish surveil it is what it is. Back. Surveil's so cool. Surveil's a great surveil. mechanic. I want more of it. Um, heartwarming Re redemption. That card is. A tearjerker and a half if you know the story, but uh, pretty unplayable. <laughs> the only time you really want to play this is if you're doing any kind of Sunforger stuff. Because nor under normal circumstances, this card gets you the exact... Like, you'll play Heartwarming Redemption, then you get oh. your hand plus one, but you end up getting the same amount as you had before Heartwarming Redemption. If you play it off of Sunforger, where you just pay the two mana, unequip it, and cast this for free... You end up being up one card if you do it off Sunforger. Problem is, so Sunforger has so much better hits in the world. <laughs> It does, but the Sunforger, like, it's, I it's guess. up for I consideration if you're, you're running Sunforge. Yeah. That's the only scenario where I'd run this card, is if Sunforger's in the deck. Uh, Watley's Raptor. More, cool cheap card. Proliferate. Cheap Proliferate. It's, it's not a bad body for two mana. Nope. Again, it's kind of small for Commander, but... But a 2-3 with an end of the battlefield, that's good. It's uh, worth... Plus, if you're in Greenland, you're running, like, Anthem effects. Having a, a big body making boost is pretty good. Proliferate's just all around a good keyword. I think this is a good card. I think people are sleeping on it. I, I think it won't see too much play in Commander, but also in Standard, I, it might, actually, because it's just a big enough body for two. Yeah. Invade the City. Look, this card's terrible. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pledge of Unity. Hey, look, Tokens deck. We we remember you exist. We remember... Tokens is just not half. Like, Chain Whirler needs to get out of Standard before... Pledge of Unity needs to be really one happens. mana cheaper, or it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Um, Neoform is actually amazing. The fact that they made a, another tutor for creatures that sacrifices... Like, the fact that they put a two-mana spell that's a birthing pod trigger is actually really good. It's like they really like the idea of birthing pod, but they're just like, it can't be birthing pod. <laughs> Between yeah, that no, and, no. like, the... Not the Vanifar. Um, or is it? Oh, yeah, it is Vanifar, yeah. Yeah, from uh, RNA. Uh, Merfolk Skydiver... Interesting card. It's not It's not going into any known Merfolk build, but it's interesting. I'd consider it for the Commander Merfolk build. Yeah. Um, but even then, that's, that's so much mana. I don't know. It feels like... Well, we'll back up. I'm talking about Merfolk Skydiver. Yeah, I know. Two mana. That's not the, a lot I mean, of The proliferate ability, I mean. Like, oh, it's basically yeah, no, a dead ability, in so which case it's thing. just with, a 2-2 two, two for two. Deck is, or at least with the uh, Kumana deck, is you kind of want to dump your hand, and then the thing is, most of your Merfolk don't cost that much money. So Or money, sorry, mana. <laughs> so that, too, they don't cost that much money, either. But you play you play your Merfolk, and then a lot of your ability revolves around getting value out of tapping your Merfolk. But once you hit your five Merfolk, your mana almost doesn't really matter that much anymore. So you have mana open to proliferate, because a lot of the Merfolk... Like, uh, the big ability on command is put a 1-1 one -one counter on all Merfolk you control. Mm -hmm. So being able to proliferate after you've done that once mm -hmm. is pretty sweet. It kind of lines up the strategy. So it's definitely going in that deck. It's not going to be C-play in the standard Merfolk deck, but it's, it's not going into modern. Like They no. still don't have a legitimate reason to splash green. Nope. So that's not happening. But I like that card. Uh, Mayhem Devil's cool, but not going to see play. Same with Leyline Prowler. Ral's Outburst, if only you cost one less mana. <laughs> yeah. God, it would be a better Electrolyze. Would that's fine. Be? Give me a better Electrolyze. <laughs> electrolyze isn't good enough. Uh, Rubble Belt, no one's going to play Rubble it. Rubble is stupid. It's too low initially. The fact that it's a zero instead of even a one. Um, Tenth Legion is cool. It's basically heroic. Yeah, it's awesome. That's actually going to... Pro if that was a common, that would probably go into the heroic deck in Pauper. Yep. Uh, Tyrant Scorn, I actually love this card. I'm not gonna play it, but it's really awesome. That's a lot of text for a two-mana instant. Yeah, it's it's got some stuff going on. Angrath sucks. Now we're into the 
So I, I hate this. So I love hybrid cards because they're supposed to make it make it easier for you to put these in more decks in constructed, except due to commander rules, yeah. they're just as restrictive in terms of deck building as straight up two color cards. And I hate this. Yep. Because I've got to evaluate certain cards in mono power. Like when I was looking at like if we slide all the way over to the to the left, because I know Tim you've been kind of zigzagging. Yep. Ashiok Dream Render. It's crazy. Um it's got to be in blue black, but I completely neglected the idea that this is. You can cast this for blue, blue, colorless. Yep. Which means Bant can play this. Yep. In modern, so it's it's like it's a viable option there. But like the entire time I'm looking, I'm like this is definitely only Demir decks can play this, and I had to get out of the commander mindset when looking at some of these. That said, when you're in the commander mindset, these are just two two color planeswalkers. Ashiok's actually one of the. Speaking of Ashiok, most playable one out of almost all of these. One of the most. Definitely. Uh, the only other one I have up for consideration personally in this grouping is uh, Kiora. Oh yeah, for for your decks, yeah, that's that's yeah, good. just because yeah. big fat creatures draw more cards. Blue green three drop on tap permanent. Your mana dorks. Yeah, so I forgot. Mana, she, she starts bad. at seven. That's I should tell. Oh yeah, I told my Rick Smithies brother buddy to run her. Yeah, he's yeah. I'm also debating on doing a Rick Smithies next, and this is super good in a Rick Smithies. Yeah, uh, Kaya's really cool, but man. She costs it's a too lot much for of what it mana. Does. It's just so much mana. Um, Watley's look. We see. This is what I mean. We had toughness more matters stuff. More butts. Uh, Dovin is just a dick. I hate Dovin. Uh, Nahiri sucks. Also, someone pointed out there's, on the subreddit. There's no there's equipment, no in, equipment in the whole fucking set. Are you serious? Which means we're getting a lot of equipment next set. As long as it's your turn, creatures you control have first strike. That's what it says in limited. Ugh, yeah. God, so she's terrible. Here's the other thing. Like, I saw her and like she would go great in SROM. If only hybrid mana didn't work this way. Yup. Maybe someday the commander rules committee will let us like have our fudge fun. on it. Yeah. I think it would break stuff, but also be a lot of fun for a lot of people. Um so Healy's really good. Uh she should yes, probably go in my buddy's Brutaclad deck. Um, it's kind of annoying that she doesn't make a token. She turns a thing into a copy, but still making a double copy of a token of anything. Well, the idea is, is that, like you you play an artifact, she makes a, a servo, servo, and then you and turn then the you servo, can make that yeah. servo into the copy next turn. So she has some internal synergy, which is yeah, good. no, She's it's cool. Like dead in the water. Samut, you suck. I'm not running yeah, you. Actual ass. Um, creatures um, you control of haste. I have better cards for that in my Samut deck, <laughs> including herself. And Vraska is actually not terrible. Perhaps it's an interesting card. I wouldn't call her good, but she's she's cool. Yeah, she's certainly one of the more interesting duels. All right, we're almost done. Run artifacts. Vivian's arc bow. Man, I wish you didn't have to discard a card to this. <laughs> it's like, so the thing. I looked at it and I was like, oh man, is this going to say? I'm like, no. Nope. Hall of Hero, not Hall of Hero. Maybe it's Hall of Hero. It does the same thing except there's no like. The fact that you, the it. fact that it's look at your top X. Like, oh, get a five drop from your top five or get fucked, idiot. <laughs> Yeah, but that's also how Hall of Heroes works in the Legendary. Like, it's not the the worst. You can play this in, in the non-Legendary version of these decks, and it's not the worst. Like, um, like if you're playing a creature-heavy deck and you do this for, like, eight, you're going to hit something. Yeah, but, like, then it's, like, just run better cards. Oh, but there's also, the, yeah, the discarded card makes it even worse. Yeah, it's so, ugh, just, I mean, like, ooh, in Commander, play this, have this on the field, and super late game, pitch a land to find something in your top. Like, that's just... Not. Anyway, this is this this row we're on right now represents something new we're going to see for Magic for a yep. while now. Is that they're they're realizing that doing colorless cards can break the game, so they're trying to do <laughs> colored artifacts to see if they can which I keep love. the flavor of what an artifact is without breaking the. Deck Although funny the enough, as we'll get to the next row, there's still some busted no color <laughs> colorless cards. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mizium Tank is actually amazing. It's basically a big prowess puncher that's not a creature when your opponents have sorcery removal. Yeah, it's great that it, it doesn't necessarily need crew to function. You never crew this. Well. No one ever is going to crew Mizium Tank. That's the, the, the thing. You can crew it, but if you design your deck right, you're never going to need. You're to. never going to crew it. Yeah. Um, and also casting other Mizium Tanks triggers it, which is great. Um, oh my god, you're right. That's cool. <laughs> uh, Bolas Citadel. The temptation is here to cat to put this in Lycia just for shits and giggles, but. I already have Necropotence. It's such a dumb card. It's so it's hilarious. It's such a dumb card. Like, like, the fact that, it's strong, but it's so stupid. Look, the fact that this card exists is great. The fact that this card is a thing, it's awesome. Like, wow. Just cast your whole top of your library for, like, life. Like, this is every Spike's dream is to find a way to break this. You know it. 
Yeah. Like, are you telling me I can storm off with my life? My life means nothing. <laughs> and then the minus, the, the bottom ability means actual nothing. <laughs> Who the fuck is ever going to do this? <laughs> Limited. Limited. Oh, yeah. uh, Silent Submarine is bad, but my friend's it putting evasion, it... Maybe, but but my friend is putting it in his Eryxmethys deck because it's water-related. <laughs> oh my god. It's flavorful, but it's terrible. <laughs> Parhelion 2 is way too much too mana... Expensive. And is the greatest really, equipment ever, and or vehicle really ever. Strong. I uh, my, I told shit, my no friend. Ever casting this. I told my buddy who's building Depala to put this in there just because it's if you ever crew it, it's busted. Yeah, you kind of win with it. Speaking of busted, let's look at three insanely two good cards that are. T- <laughs> hey, look, Karn yeah. the Great Creator. He causes spike in the already expensive Mycosynth Lattice because you can turn off your opponent's game. Wow. <laughs> Karn is just... Is this plus one effect the same as the original Karn card? Yep. It's such a flavor win. I don't like that they've gone the route of... <laughs> Karn's got to be the low-cost colorless. Um, and Ugin's the expensive. Like, and Ugin's the expensive one. Like, I missed the old Karn Liberated. Uh, that said... The funny thing is, though, that's the worst one for Commander, and it's the most mana. Yeah. That said, Karn the Great Creator is causing a big stir in the Commander community because of his minus two. Because with the current way Commander <laughs> oh, works, yeah. his minus two doesn't do anything. Uh, like, should yeah. we have should we have a wish board for commander? Like a sideboard that only functions so for good. cards like this where it lets you do stuff from outside the game. I think it's uh I think their official stance is playgroups talk about it, which is a good yeah. I think that's a good call. That's fine, yeah. I mean the idea behind it is with this one it's 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 not here's the thing though, I feel like this can be key to a strategy. I don't want to have to go to someone and say, like, Hey, how do you feel about wishboards? Someone says no and be like, All right, cool, I'm gonna just like Swap a couple cards out of my deck. I think you literally... The thing is, though, you literally just cut Karn from a deck, and then you're fine. Yeah. Like, he doesn't feel like he relies on other stuff going on that there'd be anything tied to him outside of the fact that you have a wish board. So you just cut him for something. The thing is, do people run Mycosynth Lattice a yes. lot outside of, like... Like, would someone add it for this synergy, or do they oh, usually yeah. have other stuff going on? All right. I mean, they have other stuff going on, but this would just be the cherry on top. Any deck that runs Mycosynth Lattice probably runs Karn Yeah, now. probably runs as well. Like, I saw... I, there was a game at the store months ago um, where a guy cast Mycosynth, and he was about to lose the game, and then he Vandal Blasted, and the game was over. <laughs> and that's the yeah. same level of... Like, Mycosynth only ever ends the game. That's the thing. So if you want things that end the game with the Mycosynth, you just run more of those. Because the Mycosynth on its own doesn't win, but any support card wins the game. Yep. Ugin the Ineffable. Hey, look, he's also busted. Oh, man, Ugin the Ineffable. He's going straight into that Color Cell Drazi deck I'm building. My buddy's building the, uh, the, the Dragon Engine from Dominaria. He's been building one yeah. of those, and that's, of course... Hell yeah. Uh, this card's busted. Two, two less for colorless spells is crazy. It's so good. Like This is why I think maybe there's also no no equipment on the next set either. Or if there's equipment, it's all colored equipment. Cause this would yeah, be there will be. It just has that. to be white or black or red, and I can use it. Yeah. White preferably for Strama and Lycia, but black and red can still go in Lycia. Yep. Um, and Ugin's Conjuring is actually crazy good. <laughs> like... God, but... A it, zero, it like a colorless creature that has the uh, relent, the uh, unbreathing horde, and all those other cards ability. Like, yeah, it's stupidly good. Hell, with do Ugin I out, this, it's. Do a... I put this in Ezuric because I can dump more one yeah. counters on it to fuel Absolutely, more. dude. It's also is. It's one of the. It's like. En- do you run endless one? I don't run endless one because here's you run the thing. Endless one is there's no there's no real point to it. No, endless fair. one. Once he has his counters, it doesn't matter. Like you. This has two, other two. Like, text one, after it has one. like it, the counters matter more for this card. Like yeah, if so, I want to put um the card you literally just mentioned um walking ballista. In. Yeah, walking at ballista. the time it was way too expensive. He's dropped in value since then because he's not in standard anymore. Yep. So I should actually pick that up for that deck because that in itself is yep. like an stupid ultimate win con essentially. Uh, Firemind Vessel is a great budget commander rock that's not going to see play anywhere else. It's really um, good for specifically multicolor. Like you can't add two of the same color, which kind of sucks. God Pharaoh statue um, is just mean. You run it in maybe uh, Grand Arbiter and nowhere else because you're a dickhead. You run yeah, it in stacks and nowhere else, but it's too expensive for a good stacks card, so it's kind of shit. The question is, do I put it in this? I don't think it belongs in this Eldrazi deck. All your big no. stuff is either like big creatures yeah, you don't, or just When mana. you get to six mana, you have much better things to do than make your opponents pay more mana yeah, unless you're, you're a you dick. You want to go Unle- fast on slow down your opponent. Yeah. Uh, uh, Guild Globe. 
pretty bad. Oh, you cut back to the... Yeah, Guild Globe. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I keep no, going fine, normal. Not Guild Globe yeah. is another one of those, like, in uh, Shadows, where they had the sacrifice. It's one of those where it's, like, the, it you use it as, like, a mana battery for later, and it happens to draw a card. The only thing about this is that it doesn't... It's not a mana battery. It's just a filter effect. Oh, you're right. It's not a... Yeah, never mind. Yeah, like, what's the... What, what that one prism card? Um, Pen... Uh, not Pentad it's, it's Prism. Like it's... Uh, I know what you mean. It's the one where you... Prism. It's... Yeah, it's, it's one of those. the... It's the same kind of card, except you don't have to sack it. Yeah. This one does let you filter. People play it in limited because you can filter and draw a card off at entering. Yeah. Uh, Iron Bully is way too much mana for what it does. Mana Geode is... Anyone who want, runs any commander deck where they have a three mana rock that just taps for one mana, you run this. Other than that, you don't run it. But it's pretty art. That's fucking gorgeous. It's, I think it's pretty good for the three minutes. Like usually you'd run either uh Chromatic Lantern for that effect. People will run Dark Steel Ingot because it's indestructible. I think Scry One is worth consideration if for some reason you can't afford any of the others. It's Scry That's what I, I mean. Like Coalition Relic, like Chromatic yeah. Lantern, uh the one you just said, or any I of the two drops. It's decent on the, the three The problem is I feel like it just there's so many better ones. There's so yeah. many like when you get to the three drops, you already want like the you usually want like two or three of the uh what's it called uh the, the like the the uh the simic no the uh signet signet i kept thinking yeah, of guild, simic. The guild signets. Yeah. yeah the signets and all this other stuff um prismite does nothing prismite sucks this is a bad card is it kind of like the uh it oh, what's the one no, you can't do an engine with that because it doesn't. Tax. It's meant to just filter for limited for people who are slashing planeswalkers. Yeah, weirdos. Uh, <laughs> see, Hilly Silverwing, whatever, does nothing. No, Interplanar Beacon's really cool. Oh, sorry, we uh, the other one. Yeah, Inter Interplanar's nice. Um, you're only really gonna. It's super friends. It's only in super friends. That's pretty much it. Um. Emergence Zone is actually really cool, but it's kind of... It's like a colorless, but one-shot use of... Uh, it really depends on how blue, much green flash, super Alchemist's need Refuge. Flash. Yeah. yeah, Alchemist's Refuge. The problem is I run that card, but I almost never have mana yeah. to activate it and cast something I want. That's this is very nice. accurate. You gotta throw away the land for it, though. Yep, which sucks. Uh, Mobilized, Mobilized District has land. modern implications, I think, doesn't it? Um, I'm not sure, just because I don't doesn't. know how many decks are running a ton of... Um, What's it called? Like legendary creatures. It's a it's a great man land. I'd consider this yeah, as it's, it's good. filling in a color slot on Sissa just as like an extra thing because mm -hmm. that deck can afford some color slots. Um, I'm also probably gonna run it as a land in my colorless Eldrazi just because worst case scenario, I can make a man. I can make a three three blocker. Yep. It's not the it's not the worst in the world, but also with that deck having colors isn't really a downside. Mm -hmm. Karn's Bastion, uh, Bastion is Bastion, best, best land in the set. Well, I don't know, because the one Maybe. next to it, I Blast know. Zone, these, these two are putting an engineered stuff. explosives that you can charge up on a land seems crazy good. Yeah. People were talking about how there's that the blue-black uncommon let you remove a counter from either. Yeah, and so the, you can the blow up tokens. This is great. Yeah, because you put it in with a counter. Or no. Yeah, you can remove the counter and then blow it up to destroy everyone's token. Yeah. Or you can, you can put the sacrifice... No, you can't. Wait, why can't you just sacrifice it for zero? Oh, cause because it, it enters, enters with, with a charge counter. counter. Yeah. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. So that's right. That's right. That's it's right. your way of removing it to get it down to zero. That's the only downside. That's that right. I forgot. You can't natively do token. But yeah, I but mean, Blast Zone's a great card. That and Karn's Bastion. It's like, wow, look at land. Like proliferate and lands decks got amazingly good land cards. Yeah, the general consensus for Blast Zone is it doesn't replace uh, no engineer never. explosives in any deck that ran it. Yep. It does a really good imitation. So if you want that effect, it's great as a as a especially if you needed it on one, one for like Delver. Yeah, like fighting Delver decks or something. Uh, yeah, I, it really depends on what we see. The problem is, and I I keep saying this, cards with Delve ruined everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, cause they 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 are essentially like one mana cards, but none of them like you can't print spells like destroy like what was it? Um, Abrupt Decay. Abrupt yep. Decay got ruined when Delve happened. Yep. Like fatal it kind of breaks. That's why Fatal magic. Push got, went down because hey, look, all the cards that are getting cast are technically not. Four drops or two drops. Yeah, I, I fucking hate Delve. It ruined Magic. Hey man, I run that's two my, of those. That's my hot take. The icing on the cake was the the Magic design team were like, yeah, Murderous Cut is going to be the most played Delve card ever. Nope, not even close.
the worst part is I made that same assumption too and tried to put Murderous Cut in all my decks. Murderous Cut is really good. It's not it's as good not as Tassiger. Gurmag Angler. Or Gurmag. God, the Gurmag, the, th <laughs> the threat in every format ever. The I fact that it a common... Everyone was for a week, everyone was playing Tassiger and I was like, wait a minute, Gurmag can can kill it if we block. So it's like, fuck it, we're all playing Gurmag now. Gateway Plaza looks nice. I didn't realize they were reprinting it. Yep, I didn't either. And it's just there for the flavor and because the, there's no and now for the real the, the real hype of this set is these beautiful basic lands including the basic land panorama bottom cycle which is that swamp it doesn't look like a swamp but i love it yeah the one with all the stuff swirling it all the sparks the all of both the both the islands that aren't in the panorama yes they're very cool the new prov ones insane. yes i i especially like the middle one the one with the super golden glow that's yes, awesome like I'm going. I'm going back and looking at my blue white Sun Titan deck, and I'm fixing the basics. <laughs> all these. I will say uh, the funny mountain that looks like ro everyone made rocket ship memes out of. <laughs> is it not supposed to be a rocket ship? Or no, is it it's just water. It's waterfall. It's like water coming down. I think. It looks like water or steam or something because there's all that Point fog is, down it's, there. It's the, it's the rabbit. It looks space like program. rod. Yeah, everyone made fun of rocket ships. That's so funny. <laughs> I will say the panorama is really pretty, but I actually kind of hate how the mountain looks on the panorama. Yeah, the problem is it's it looks this really is like, oh, CGI it's the and fake. That, that don't look like the thing they're depicting. Yeah, they look really, really CGI. They are super CGI. That, that said, I just love the effect on top of the bull offset on the swamp, and I love oh, yeah, that one more than all cool, these. Oh, yeah, it's super cool, yeah. Like, I'm going to find a deck and put all, all those in. And then the Mythic Edition we already talked about. It's, I mean, Jace the Mind Sculptor's in it, so already millions of dollars money. already sold yeah, out day is, one i was listening to my boy rudy from alpha investments last night and he was talking about how the first two boxes he refused to spec on them he's like it's it's just it's too risky and he's like yeah this is straight up printing money i'm getting as many as i can possibly fucking get asshole no real people want these for not money dude everyone is specking on these like i think the i think this box is gonna sell it instantaneously I, I want to try. I'm going to hope that my work computer's internet is fast enough because I'll be at work when it comes out. That's when you got to like set up your phone to also try and do it and just like just have it all go. I'm not up even on what style four computers open. Yeah, just just any way to cram it in. I mean, all you got to do is click on it and get it into your cart, right? I'm not sure. I don't remember how it worked. I don't remember how it worked last time. But yeah, that's uh, that's War of the Spark, and that's all the updates for my commander decks. Uh, Freeman, do you have anything that stood out to you now that we did this that seems I like mean, it's... I mean, I think I pointed out most of the ones that I'm going to slot in. The problem is yeah. all my lists are kind of tight, and I'm always hesitant to try and make too many changes. Yeah, welcome uh, to my fucking world with I'm deck. I'm also lazy shit changes. and still haven't updated any of my lists from Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiances. Like, I still have a couple cards in the mail, but I got to get those ready before we meet up in May so I can actually play these updated Yeah, dude, lists. we're going to be meeting up. It's a week from... No, well, aren't we also not a seeing week. you before that? Yeah, we're seeing you in a month. But, well, we might not see you guys for more than a few hours while we're home. Okay, um, so we won't plan on Commander. We'll just plan on just shooting the shit. Yeah, because we're coming home for, like, five seconds, and then we are spending most of the time doing uh, the graduation stuff. Yep. Because apparently Saturday night we're doing dinner in the city, and then Sunday is graduation on, on Long Island, so... You know, that's all day. Yeah. And then we're leaving Monday, and you guys are going to be at work. Yep. But anyway, um, we're going to end the live stream here, because I'm going to be going to Commander within an hour. Because <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. Um, thanks to the, like, three people who st stuck around, I'm sure. Um, like I said, our 3.1 fans. Yeah, our, our four people who stuck around for this whole time that you guys just sat and listened. But... Um, this was fun. It's always fun to talk Commander, and maybe in the near future we'll finally find time to actually play some Commander on stream a little bit. X to doubt, but I hope it happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Tim and Friedman, and we will catch you guys later on the podcast, I'm sure. <laughs>